Welcome in to the John Neighbor Show here live from Natty State Sports Studios. Appreciate everybody listening in on this beautiful day here in the great state of Arkansas. I am your host, John Neighbors, and we have a lot to get to today. But thank you, as always, for making us a part of your afternoon this afternoon. And we have Razorback news really across all different sports that we're going to dive into. Get into your comments and some of your questions and everything in our live stream and be sure to follow us and like us on all things Natty State Sports as we're going to have some updates throughout the rest of the show as well. But here's the thing, though. It's kind of nice, right, to be able to come to you on a show like this and be able to talk about a Razorback basketball victory, right? Feels like it's been a long time, but Arkansas actually does get the victory in convincing fashion. I don't care what the final score says. We all know that Arkansas blew the doors off of Missouri last night on the road, and it was really nice to see, especially because it was offensively is what Arkansas was able to do. 91-84, to Arkansas does get the dub, and honestly, again, it wasn't even that close. I think Arkansas at one point had a 23-point lead there in the second half and really just put it to Missouri. And it was nice to see. We know Devo's not playing. Trevor Brazil didn't play, but overall, I felt like it was great. Great to see not only Arkansas be able to put some things together in the right way, but also be able to try and salvage whatever's left of this season. So let's go ahead and talk more about it as we welcome in Andrew Ellis, who's also uh, hanging out over there, too. And uh, what's up, Andrew? I know it's been a minute since we've been able to talk about a win, but isn't it nice, though, for a change? A little different? It is nice. It feels, uh, you know, it was a workmanlike performance by the Pigs last night, John. They uh, wasn't it wasn't like the most beautiful flawless thing although Arkansas moved the ball well and they they did a lot of things that we haven't seen them do which was like care and try hard and all those great things but the real key was that they were playing Missouri that was the best part about it because even even if Arkansas had played as well as they did last night against a Kentucky when they're really cooking or maybe Florida who knocked off Kentucky last night or Auburn or whoever but it was good enough to beat Missouri, and that's all that really matters. Mm-hmm. We can talk about the big picture and what it means for Arkansas moving forward and if the program is rejuvenated. The answer is no, but they did beat Missouri last night, and that's all that matters, John. It, that's all that matters is Arkansas beat Missouri Missouri basketball. sucked. They were a really Missouri bad was basketball. Really bad. They were a very, very, very bad basketball team, and there's a reason why they're 0-8. But how about... And there's a few people that we're going to bring up here on the show and, and just kind of give a shout out to the performance. But how about Makai Mitchell, the birthday boy? I don't know if you heard. It was his birthday Happy yesterday. Happy birthday to him. Happy birthday indeed. Makai Mitchell, 19 points, 14 rebounds, two assists. And that was in nearly 34 minutes of play. They truly had no answer for Makai Mitchell. He goes 8 of 13 from the field, 3 of 4 from the free throw line. And of those 14 rebounds, five of them were offensive rebounds. So, a nice little, uh, nice little get there, and that's back-to-back games now. Yeah. Makai Mitchell's had a really good showing. How about that? Well, that's what's funny is like when we talked about it being his birthday yesterday. It's like, oh man, it's kind of funny that he just put together like the best game of his season, most likely on Saturday against Kentucky, when I think it was 13 points and 12 rebounds, and we we're like, oh, good that it is his birthday. Maybe he plays well, but it's like we felt like that was the the cool Makai performance for him to uh, give himself an encore and one up himself. That's pretty cool and uh, good to see him playing hard, man. He's only got, I guess. I guess we, this is our, our, our favorite recurring bit. However many games left, 10, uh, that's how many he's got left. I mean, it's, I think he he feels that urgency, and this team needs some urgency. At least Makai Mitchell's got it. Yes, they do. A lot of them had it last night, though. So They did. Like They just played with more energy, and I know that that's such a cliche thing to say, but it's true. They played with more energy. Makai Mitchell uh, being able to do whatever he wanted to do, it seemed like, mm-hmm. and as great as he was, I was almost as much, if not equally, more impressed by what Jalen Graham was able to do, where he has 13 points, 
has one rebound. So you see that, like, oh, okay, whatever. How about this? Four assists, four steals, three blocks, 25 minutes of play. Did get five fouls because he fouled out. But Point Graham, yeah. Yeah, point, point Graham. I mean, how the fact that he was able to go out there and lead the team in assists and steals. Yeah. Tremont Mark also played really good defense. I mean, all three yeah. of those guys just, it, yeah, it seemed like they really took it personally, and it was good to see the front court play well and kind of makes you think, John, was uh, there any, been anything different these last two games that would change the front court dynamic? And I don't know. It seems it's, it's hmm. just interesting that uh, even Chandler Lawson, I don't even remember what his stats were, but I remember him making a couple nice plays out there. It's like all these guys seem to be doing uh, doing their job now. Yeah. It's interesting. It's crazy that because Tremont Mark is, again, I said, I said this before and I'll say it again. There is no player that is more silent when it comes to yeah. their 20-point games than Tremont Mark because he had another one last night. 22 points, four rebounds. Uh, also was able to go 8 of 13 from the field, so very efficient. He threw in two block shots and three steals himself. Did have three turnovers and one assist, but it was crazy. He had such a great game, yet he was the only player with the plus and minus and minus five. He was the only one in the negative there, which I know the stat kind of gets thrown up, but just one of those stats which is like, how does that happen with the type of performance that he did have? But he certainly is uh, continuing to show that he is the best player on this team, and that's another great game of showing why. Pure Hooper, man. Tremont Mark is a pure Hooper, and I really like, you know, that one of the first things we learned about Tremont Mark when he transferred to Arkansas I was like, oh, this guy's an awesome defender. We hadn't seen that a ton this year, but it seemed like he, he took a, a step up on that into the floor. Yeah, I don't know what his final line was, but he was all over the place, defending shots, stealing shots. I think he had three steals. He was all over the place, and it was just uh, it was fun to see it. And again, it was against Missouri, but I like that. Uh, Tremont Mark is definitely he's a leader of this team, which is kind of interesting. And yeah, he, you said he's quiet. People. He's quiet on the court with his scoring because he's so laid back. He's a very quiet guy off the court too. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, um, he is. But yeah, what a, what an addition, man. Yeah, Keon Minifield, sixteen points, had two rebounds for him, three assists for him. And Arkansas shoots, here's what's crazy. Arkansas shoots 54% from the field, 66% from three points, because they went four of six. Only took six threes. That is, so that is pretty crazy. That's pretty wild. And then 21 of 26 from the free throw line for 81%. All those numbers are incredible. But here's what's crazy is that Missouri shot 46% from the field, which is pretty good. Yeah. 50% from three-point land where they hit 10 of 20. 20. And then 91% from the free throw line. If you just would have thrown out the percentages, you probably wouldn't have like Arkansas loses this game. But, I mean, Missouri is an offensive team that, I mean, they can score. And Tamar Bates had yeah. 29 points, which he was incredible last night. But they, they, I don't know what they're doing defensively. I don't know what they try to do. I don't know what yeah. they, what they're, like, just seeing so many plays, so many basic basketball plays where they completely and totally look lost against all odds was, again, give Arkansas credit because they won, but Missouri, yeah. there's a reason why now they're officially 0-8 in conference. Well, that's why it's like yesterday, as I'm trying to talk myself into Arkansas winning the game, which we all did, by the way, for the most part. I think you tried to, you tried to push back a little bit. Uh, but I, we, we, I think you changed your mind last second, though, at least. So we were all kind of, we all at some point or another talked ourselves into Arkansas winning. The whole conversation around it was based on Missouri being bad. That's why it was easier to do that. And there, we felt like there were stretches there where Arkansas just wasn't playing against an opponent. Like they were just yeah. out there playing. I mean, Arkansas got to, got it going in transition, which like Arkansas doesn't even try to do. We figured out like they don't even try to run, but they somehow Jalen Graham was leading transition breaks successfully. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. Anytime you can book a game against just no opponent, you got to do it. And Arkansas did that last night. And it's funny you mentioned that it was closer than it looked. They hit like four of those ten threes in the last like two minutes. Yeah. That's kind of where it all came from. But, yeah, it is pretty crazy. If you had told me that Arkansas was going to give up 10 threes on the road to I, anyone, yeah. let alone – even. I mean, I guess Missouri's the one team that could lose to you while doing that. But, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. Well, we talked about yesterday, too, how Arkansas was the worst offensive team in the conference and Missouri yeah. was the worst defensive team in the conference. And we see which one is actually worse. It is Missouri's yeah. defense is worse than Arkansas's offense because Arkansas's offense looked like a well-oiled machine last night, comparatively speaking. They were moving the rock, man. It was crazy. Yeah. But how about the Connor Vanover? Right? right? How about that? Hey, Connor, Connor looked healthy. He looked very healthy last night. He had a lot of, I think he's been taking his biotin pills, had a lot of hair. <laughs> yeah, going yeah, he got on. the yeah, beard he's like, going. Yeah, he looked and like everything. a caveman type of thing. So. Uh, and I know he's seven, he wears 75 because he's 7'5. Horrible. You can't, you can't have an offensive line number. In basketball. No. You just can't. I mean, the offensive line number is an offensive line number for a reason. 
No. It's for offensive linemen. Yeah, you shouldn't. If you're not an offensive lineman, you cannot wear a number in the 70s. Which Connor Vanover, if even if he tried to be an offensive lineman, would not be an offensive lineman. Could Arkansas? All. Could uh, Connor Vanover have started on last year's Arkansas offensive line? Hey yo, could have been too deep. Yeah. I think so. At least the too deep. So, but yeah, Connor Vanover, 14 minutes for him. Three of five from the field. Did it? 14 three. seems low. It seems like he was out there a lot more. I know. He didn't really do anything productive except to that one three. Yeah, he had one three. He had seven points from four rebounds, one assist, one turnover, had one block, but he was minus eight on the court, which was good enough for last on the Missouri Tigers roster. So, yeah, so much for that whole <laughs> game that everything was like people were blowing up and saying how this game is going to be electric and awesome and i guess there was a decent amount of fans there not a whole lot yeah, I but don't know. I, mean, I don't know the antlers were out the antlers were out yeah wearing dresses all right yeah. <laughs> whatever you need to do buddy so there you have it there's a uh there's arkansas recap the question becomes though like for real i know like what what are they playing for at this point you know like what are they actually legitimately going for because if you ask them they're gonna be like oh you know to win every game go to the ncaa tournament and you know we just win the sec tournaments and do all this that's that's a great that is a great sentiment but let's be realistic right now what is the main thing that they're playing for is it for each other is it for pride is it one of those other cliches that get thrown around what's the point i think they've just gotten to that point where they have nothing to lose and so you got to just see if you can find something in that and it's kind of funny because I have no doubt that this team is going to play. I mean, last night they started it, play better than they've played to this point in the season, but I just have a hard time believing it's going to be enough. We can break down the numbers and the math. I, I really do not know if they have a realistic chance. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to say realistic. If they have any chance at all of make, getting an at-large bid. I just really don't know. Maybe if you win your next nine games, maybe the numbers look different. Who knows? But I don't even think we should have that conversation. I think it's just a matter of, can this team find anything to build on? And they don't have much time. You got to be hoping you play your best ball in March. Like, I know it sounds crazy. That's what we always say with baseball is like, you got to hope you're playing baseball. You got to hope you're playing your best ball at the right time. I think Arkansas is in that mode. And I don't think they should be anybody that wants to do the, the math of an at large bid. You can do it, but I just, I don't, I'm not buying that. I think you just got to hope that you're a team that nobody wants to face in March. And then you go to the SEC tournament and you see what happens. Yeah, because this win over Missouri isn't exactly just like, oh, wow, yeah. they figure, like, Because, again, they're right. so bad. So, yeah, they played better against Kentucky. But well, what it would have helped really if you had mean? actually blown them out by, like, 30. Yes. Then all of a sudden it's like, oh, you went on the road and beat someone by 30. That's going to move your metrics just for that. You end up winning by seven. Yeah. And so a seven on the road against a horrible team. It gives you a bump, but it's not really a bump. No. In fact, uh, here was Muss after the game last night and had an interesting comment and talking about the team and how it uh, is uh, compared to his previous year teams. Really proud of us offensively scoring 47 and 44 in the two halves. I thought we did a phenomenal job sharing the basketball. Defensive activity is where it needs to be with 10 steals. This, this group tonight <clears throat> played like teams of, of the past, creating steals, jumping in passing lanes, sharing the basketball, um, super proud of, of, of the 40-minute effort tonight. Really How about that, bringing up the fact <laughs> that this is a team that is close to have uh, played like the teams of the past, which he has brought up many times this year. <laughs> that they don't. That they haven't, <laughs> and they don't. It's like teams, you know, teams in the past, they did this. Or teams, you know, we, we, this is the first year we've had this. It's, you know, it's always been about that. And now this is the time where he comes up and says, this team has played tonight like we had in the past. So I know that it's it's not necessarily like a bad thing or that he's trying to take a slight at uh, any particular situation, but it is interesting to hear him say that where, and what we look at is just an uh, whatever win over Missouri. Yeah. He's talking about, oh, this team, this is the first time they played like a team from the previous year, which is a pretty big statement. It is a pretty big statement, especially when you take into account what those teams accomplished. And those runs where we talk about of winning 9 of 10, that's literally what they did in some of those seasons. I mean, in that that first year that they went to the Elite Eight, they had to they had to win seven or eight straight in SEC play to kind of get themselves out of the hole they had built. Problem is, this is just by far the biggest hole they've been in. And, you know, again, John, like these are things that we've heard must say before of the, oh, this team doesn't play like the teams that we've had before. And then in January, oh, now they're starting to play tough and it's cool. I just feel like February 1st is a really late date to start doing this this bit. Uh, but, you know, I, it went, based on what we saw last night, they did kind of look like the teams of the past. And now, again, 
against Missouri. We can't overlook that. Uh, but if they keep that same toughness and that willingness, they had it last night. Can they maintain it? We'll see. They really haven't done it much, but taking in the fact that they also played pretty hard against Kentucky. They didn't play particularly well, but they played hard against Kentucky. That's two performances in a row where they tried, John. Will they try a third time in a row? We'll find out, but it's a winnable game on Saturday. And so, hey, you go out there and win that one. We can start at least playing the game again of the, yeah. will they turn it around? Is this, you know, and again, I'm still not there yet to like really buy that as a thing. But if you string together some wins, it'll build and we'll have fun. And that's all we can ask for at this point. It's They're so, playing to have fun, John. Yes, because it, it hasn't even been fun even in the games that they were like kind of close. Because even the Kentucky game, was the Kentucky game fun? I mean, no. I guess a, maybe for a second, but it wasn't really overall very fun. The vibes at our establishment were not great, at least for no. you and I. Maybe we're not qualified to speak on this. Yeah, maybe because yeah, we weren't there in person. <laughs> but uh, it, was, it just wasn't, wasn't fun. But yes, being able to have fun. Being able to, to talk more about it is a lot is a lot more entertaining to all of us and a lot more interesting to all of us. But playing that LSU game at 11 a.m. on Saturday in Baton Rouge, it's like, okay, well, I guess we'll see. But even if they win that one, it's not like I'm going to start saying, oh, man, this team's back. They're going to do some great things. It's a step in the right direction. But LSU is not a great team. And as we talked about last night on the live stream, which, by the way, if you missed it, you missed a doozy. But if, uh, if Arkansas is going to go down there, I just doubt that LSU at 11 a.m. in Baton Rouge on a Saturday is really going to have a raucous crowd where the energy is going to get to them. I mean, if Missouri is not the most favorable road SEC crowd you can imagine, LSU basketball, as crazy as it is, because those Tiger fan base, that Tiger fan base, they love sports. They love their Tigers, and they're crazy, and they're capable of building crazy atmospheres like we've seen in other sports. Basketball, they just don't care, man. I don't know what it is. I've been down there a lot, and I remember one time going down there and being like, hey, guys, you want to go watch the LSU basketball game? And my buddies were like, hell no. Like, we're not going to that. We're going to the, we're just, let's go somewhere else. I'm like, all right, fair enough. But it's like, they really just don't care. It's not part of the culture down at LSU. Taking into account that it's 11 a.m., the LSU's starting to fall apart already, and everyone knows they suck, and they were fraudulent when they started three and two. And Arkansas is kind of in this us against the world mode right now. Like, hey, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think it's his, as favorable a road matchup as you can find in the SEC this time of year. Yeah, I, I agree. It's the Pete Maravich Center, right? Pete Still Maravich that, Center, yeah. the PMAC. The PMAC, yeah. Uh, which uh, is it? Uh, I always want to call him Vince McMahon, but it's not Vince McMahon. It's Matt McMahon is the coach. Yes, that's down there. Uh, so. The Mur he basically is still coaching Murray State because he just brought the entire team with him. Well, considering all the NCAA issues that they had, is probably his only choice <laughs> was like, just to bring can't in all get the guys any good recruits for like four years. Yeah, uh, yeah, because of the way that future Arkansas head coach yeah. Will Wade put that program. Man, yeah. Well, future. I'm just kidding. I hate Will Wade. I really don't want him. I mean, I will talk myself in if he ends up coaching Arkansas. So I'll, we'll cut this, but. I, I I loved making fun of him when he was at he's LSU. He's a very he's a very easy guy to make fun of for for all the right reasons too. But is this team better than Vital Devo in Brazil? Because and you know we're not talking about the rumors, we're not talking about all this stuff. But seeing how the team has played, just in these small sample size, two games yeah. without Devo Davis and without Trevin Brazil, it looks like it's a team that is at least better, not great, but better and. It makes you wonder. I mean, woulda, coulda, shoulda, all that stuff. But it makes you wonder if Devo and Brazil weren't on the team from the get-go, from the very beginning of the season, would this have been the same type of deal? Would this would have been the same situation? Would this would have looked the same? Would it have been having the same struggles? Because not that we know for a fact, but it certainly seems like the team is a lot more loose, a lot more confident, a lot having a lot more fun. Yeah. And maybe it's one, maybe it's the other, maybe it's both. But the fact that these this team is just light years different from where Brazil and Devo, when they are on the team, it is at least a, a little interesting tidbit. And look, John, I'm 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 with you. It's hard to say that they're not. Like I mean, realistically, and that's I want to be careful before I say this. That's not a knock even on Devo or Trevin, because look, Arkansas beat Duke without Tremont Mark. They so did. we've seen that like basketball is a weird sport where it's all about the flow and how the pieces work together. We've learned that over the last four years, 19 different times when Mus always lets us know it's all about the fit. It's all about the rotation. It's all about all these things. So yeah, it, it, it's, it's impossible not to realize you take one piece out and things are different. You take one piece out, but I just want the, I bring up Tremont Mark just to let you know that it's not like 
a truly like negative on Trevin, even though obviously he hasn't lived to the potential that we hoped he would this year. And right. same with Debo, hasn't looked like the Debo of past. But we've seen both of those guys thrive in different situations on numerous occasions. In Debo's case, every other year, you know, so it's like it's not even as much that those guys are like to to blame here. Sometimes you just find the right combination. I mean, L. Ellis is another guy who talented piece was a DNP coach's decision last night, and the offense and defense looked better. Does that mean L. Ellis sucks at basketball? No, it definitely it definitely doesn't. We've seen L. Ellis be productive on a basketball court against everyone, against the highest level of competition. All three of these guys. But sometimes it's just the right fit, the right pieces, the right combination. And I'm not saying that like this is the best version of this Arkansas team. I didn't think it would be this combination. So that tells you how stupid we are. We all thought it would look different. But I think it would be hard to ignore the evidence that sometimes different groups of piece of players work together. And sometimes the absence of certain players on this Arkansas team seem to ignite better versions of their teammates. See, and we've seen it happen too much to ignore the fact that it happens. Yeah, yeah, and see, that's where it's so strange, where of all the players that I thought would actually be a, a difference, where if this player wasn't on the team, then it would be better or whatever. It was like Devo has been a guy who's gone through different teams and had different players and everybody that he's had to play around with. And it's been good for the most part. But then when he finally gets out of the rotation and it's almost like if there's any sort of pressure, if there's any sort of uh, uncomfortable awkwardness, whatever it is, they're playing a lot more loose. And we know Trevor Brazil is still technically like on the team. It's not, they're not the same situation. Yeah. I don't, I'm going to be curious to see what his status will be. Will they, my guess would probably be is that he doesn't play against LSU and then they kind of use that full week. And then when Georgia comes to town, or your next home game a week from Saturday is when you'll finally get to see a little bit more Trevin Brazil. But I'm wondering, too, if Muss is seeing that as well when he brings up that from his team, where he's saying, hey, this is the this is the closest we've looked to like a team of before, so maybe it's one of those deals where, like, hey, I'm just going to keep, because we know Muss, when he finds something, he's going to keep riding it. So yeah. we're going to see the same starting lineup, more than likely. We'll probably see the same type of plays, the same type of uh, guys getting involved, and um, you know, whether it's L. Ellis playing or not playing, whether it's, uh, you know, Makai Mitchell going for 19 and 14, which isn't something that's probably very sustainable, but still pretty interesting. <laughs> but uh, like all of that put together, Muss is going to continue to try to ride this until somebody else figures out a way to stop him or at least try to slow him down. And so that's going to be a fascinating thing. And I I'm going to be so pissed off, Andrew, if they end up having a year this year where it ends in a, in a final record of we'll just throw something out like, I don't know, like 18 and whatever the number would be. 14. Yeah, 18 and 14, something like that. Missing the tournament. That's the right number. I'm just guessing. Right. It sounds <laughs> right. It sounds good. But it's like uh, once you get down to that point and once you get down to that record, we in the season, we look back and be like, man, that team without Devo and TB probably would have been an NCAA tournament team. You know, especially if Arkansas beats a Tennessee at home or a. Uh, you know, like what if they ended the oh, season man. beat Alabama on the road, like all that stuff. We just continue to be like, woulda, coulda, shoulda, what if? And I hate that. There's nothing worse in a season than looking back on a year and just being like, what if so-and-so did or did not play and how big of a difference it would Well, made. look, if you're a sunshine pumper, I want you to listen real close because I'm going to give you a suggestion. We just talked about we don't know the likelihood of Arkansas's at-large resume being good enough to even warrant consideration but if you are able to go on whatever run you go on and whatever that looks, you win 8 of 11 or 7 of 11 or whatever, if your metrics are anywhere close, that's the kind of stuff we've seen the NCAA tournament take into account before. And so if it comes down to, if Arkansas goes to the SEC title game in the tournament and maybe they lose and they're like on that like RPI 62 range where it's like, ah, is this really a tournament team? We've seen crazier things happen. And also, I know Arkansas fans think that the NCAA tournament, they they rig stuff against Arkansas. Of course they do. Of course they if do. If there were a basketball program the NCAA would want to rig it in the favor of to get them in the tournament, it would be Arkansas. I need y'all yep. to understand that just yep. so we don't think like, oh, the NCAA wants to screw Arkansas. In this case, they really don't. They are begging Arkansas and that massive fan base to travel all over the country and watch that team play basketball. So I think that I'm not saying Arkansas has got a chance to sneak in here, but I'm just saying if you want to talk yourself into crazy stuff, as long as the team gets to keep playing Missouri, we can do this. Yeah. I mean, I think that Missouri might be on the schedule <laughs> one more time, maybe even two. Yeah, you get to play them one more go. time, so you better enjoy that one. Yeah. Could, we'll could. have this exact conversation after they beat Missouri the next time, but all the other games in between, if we just ignore them, they might have a chance, John. I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah, it, it may play out, but I, 
I, I hope they finish strong. I really do. And it's no, it's just for the sake of interest and for the sake of all of that. Because I, I will say it was funny to see, and we're, we're not going to dive into it, but it was funny to see Trevin Brazil put out an Instagram story talking about uh, his boys and the, the love triangle. The love triangle. That was funny. That uh, Jalen Graham up. also had a funny one. Did you see? No. What was Jalen Graham Graham's? posted the Spider Man meme. His was actually spicier. It was a Spider-Man meme of the three Spider-Mans point, and it was him, and it had, like, me, Trevin, and Devo. Really? He threw Devo's name in there. I thought that was a, that was a spicy post. Man, see, these, the, I love spicy posts. And, like, I, it's like, so that kind of shows you, like, what, yeah. yeah. By the way, we had a guy comment on the show yesterday and was like, why don't y'all talk about the rumors? We all know what you're talking about. I'm like, what, are we just supposed to go through our DMs and just address every ridiculous rumor that's been thrown out at us. Like that doesn't make any sense. So of course I'm glad we didn't touch on the rumors that have now kind of become a funny joke. Like it's just crazy. I know. Well, that's the thing is they get mad at you if you talk about the rumors and then if you don't talk about the rumors, right. they get we're mad also at you, getting so. blamed for starting the rumors. That's what they're like. That's oh, true. the reason these rumors are happening because of these podcasts, but we're also scared to talk about the rumors. Yeah. Yeah, We've actually done neither of those things <laughs> and have just been guys observing it on the internet like y'all. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, that's, uh, and that's it. In fact, I want, okay, I wanted to bring this, uh, this uh, post up, folks, because uh, since Andrew brought it up, look at that. That is Jalen Graham's uh, Instagram here. <laughs> you can't read it, but it says TB and Devo and Jalen. Yeah, I must say. Yeah, I but that's a, that's a hilarious post. Yeah. Jalen Graham. Because Jalen Graham, anytime there's rumors about stuff being thrown around, Jalen Graham's name always gets slid in there. Yeah, and why is that? Why is it always Jalen Graham? Is it just because he's an easy target to people or something? I mean, if you're going to make up stuff and you're going to accuse Razorback basketball players of doing things with other men, I think uh, you're going to you're going to scan and you're going to think which you know which one would people really believe and. Uh, I think he chose Jalen Graham, and Jalen yeah. Graham thought it was funny, him and Trevin. Yeah, and by the way, Caden. Who, by from, the way, are the two can Like, those would be the two guys where you're like, all right, if I'm going to make up a rumor. Oh, yeah. And Devo, like, those are the guys. So it's pretty funny. There. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, by the way, Caden and everybody asking that, that, that is literally Jalen Graham's post. So, yeah, that he, yeah. he did post no that. No way he would yeah. post that. Oh, he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he did. That's, see, and, that, uh, and that's the type of stuff that I'm glad that they, like, yeah. decided to post i'm glad they waited until after a win to post it too if you had post if they had lost to missouri oh, and then we're dude, like yeah. i love triangle would not have been funny it makes you kind of wonder like maybe they were waiting to post that after a win like no matter what like they may have had that in the ready on a kentucky well, i bet, I bet when it was really all surface and they were like man i kind of want to say something but coming off a of few losses not playing well it just it was a, it was a tough time yeah yeah because you got yeah you got to have a time and place for the post there right. too so yeah i'm gonna here you guys go for uh, for those who wonder about Trevin Brazil's uh, post. It was, again, we'll zoom in on it. So, yeah, Trevin Brazil here is talking about uh, love triangle, simple like that. And then it's just a picture of uh, shout out to triangles. Kate Arbogast. Kate Arbogast talking about the love triangle. Uh, player of the first half last night. Forgot to mention that. Oh I should, yeah, so I yeah. should have led with that. Him and Lawson Seriously. Blake got to play yeah. at the end of the game or at the end of the first half. Didn't Jay Harris? They got literally zero seconds because it was only point two seconds left on the yeah. clock. But they did get an official check in. No official stats or anything. But Pinage their, Harris. <laughs> their plus minus were uh, was one for all of them. So yeah, there you go. They made, well, I guess I, it was they were in they there while the Arkansas. Was made. That's why I always think that's funny that like the plus minus if you. Get if you like are staying in the game while the free throw is happening, the one free throw counts for you and the one doesn't. It's like you were on the floor or you weren't, or the guy coming in is getting charged with the free throw that the opponent's shooting. It's like, ah, it's cool. yeah, I, I kind of always wondered like how all that works. I don't know. It's just, it's just one of those stats that you want to use it in your advantage or use it in <laughs> exactly. against something. So it's like that's the only time it gets brought up. The only time but, it gets brought up is if Joseph Pinion has a plus 18. That's when we hear about that's plus when it, minus. Yeah, that's when it gets brought up. It just makes me wonder where are these rumors coming from, you know? Like who's starting these things? Like who, who's throwing these around? It's almost like, man, the fact that it's 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 sad because I don't think it's just uh, some kids or whatever in their shenanigans. It might be something a little bit more serious than that, and that's just disappointing. That's just disappointing. Regardless, it's like, man, we really should just uh, stop believing everything we see on the internet. I know. Like, what do we ever learn that as a human society? I don't well, think it's crazy. Do. It's like, look, I, I understand if you want to, if you see something and you read it and you're like, all right, I'm going to take that information and take it moving forward. You don't have to just jump to the conclusion that the 
information you're being told tells you to jump to. Like you can, there's a, there's room for some nuance and to let stuff play out or to hear both sides or just anything like that. It's crazy how many people will like hear a thing, latch onto it and just run with it. And like all these people acting as if they've heard something that has been reported as fact. I don't know, man. It's just crazy. It's, it's, it's sad. It really is sad, and I feel bad for everybody that gets involved. In and that then they thing. want us to talk about it. They're like, "Why are y'all not talking about this?" It's like, because it's, <laughs> it's stupid. Like a, it's stupid. It's My uncle stupid told me to he saw up. a unicorn. Why aren't you talking about it, yeah. John? Yeah, it's like that. We should we should have done a show, and maybe we will at some point do a show where it's just like we're going to talk about the stupidest like things that got brought up that people actually so much believe that it got so much traction, like the time when uh, John Gruden and Jeff Long were meeting at the powerhouse. Oh yeah. And, uh, you know, they were talking and, you know, depending on the color of John Gruden's tie meant that he was going to Arkansas if it was red. Yeah. Uh, the fact that people actually believed all that nonsense was stupid, like insane. So just there's so many of that stuff that happens in the uh, the, the social media landscape or Razorback sports. I mean, it's like that, I'm sure, with other places, but the funny Must have been a wild here. week uh, for Tremont Mark's girlfriend who moved to Fayetteville with him. It has. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not what you expect. <laughs> when you, when you are dating what, a famous basketball player, that's not what if, you expect. I wonder if we ever hear her thoughts on this. I'm sure we Did she won't. post anything? <laughs> Did she post a meme by chance? Yeah. What's That'd her be, meme game like? We're going to find out soon. Yeah, that, that would be pretty great. <laughs> hey, speaking of something terrible, um, this is not a rumor. This is actually real, but I know a lot of you were asking in, in the comment section and everything. Uh, wow. Okay. So um, the antlers. We talked about the Antlers yesterday, the Missouri student section, all that stuff. Well, this is the Antlers Twitter account that you guys are looking at right now. And they had the caption that just says, they took our best signs. And as I scroll down, that's the, uh, that's, that's the student section of uh, Missouri. When that guy was walking around town with a sign that said, oiled up, sweaty hog, <laughs> out of context. Yeah. What, like, what do you say? Whenever you're just carrying that around. Oh, no, it's because we're playing this team that uh, their mascot is a hog. So you think that he gets that question asked first or why is he walking around like wearing a, wearing a, jer- a dress yeah, wearing just, that sign? <laughs> I didn't realize he was one of the ones wearing a dress. I they're guess they're all, all wearing, wearing dresses. dresses. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's uh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's um, this is something that they thought was like, you know, this is cool. Like, this is a cool thing that we need to do and we need to have like shake because some of them shave like the top of their heads for this and yeah. some of them like have a faux hawk and, and, I'm, and i'm just like doing it for an, a winless basketball team is crazy it's pretty wild like if you're if you're like at duke and y'all want to do some crazy stuff like all right the camera crazy is like you got to do weird stuff i get it i still you know we can still make fun of you for it but we at least get it doing this for an zero and eight team is nuts well yeah because i'm like i'm looking at it as like oh, listen as someone who was in the student section a student yeah. section aficionado like I was, duh. But I see this and I'm like, this is terrible. Like this is just not even creative. And apparently this is a tradition. Like they, they do it. And like my favorite thing is like, let's, let's really dissect it. This guy right here and this guy right here, they got their monster energy drinks going on. There you go. So, you know, it, you know, it's legit. Um, yeah. The, the fact that they said they took their good signs. I'm sure their good signs were Yeah, really I would have loved to see those. Yeah. I would have loved to seen that. Um, some of them didn't even do anything to their hair. Some of them just uh, rolled around with it. But, um, yeah. They also, I guess, were the student section. They were doing the the hats. The, whatever you want to call them, bucket hats. Yeah. They were all doing that. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know what was the, happening. The announcers were, were doing that at one point. That was yeah, good. they were. That was cool. That was so cool. Coolest guys we know. Anyways, <laughs> uh, the broadcast was something. The it's game always, was something. Dude, you know glad Arkansas just beat those guys. TV nowadays is basically just old white guys doing things that young people do, and they're like, "Ha ha, see that?" You know, no, well, that's hip. that's so true. What, what the woman that was did CBS college football? Is it Michelle Tafoya? Michelle Tafoya. I would add to the maybe name it was that the I girl had. that was before her. I don't know. Anyways, one of them. It was when all, it Tracy was, Wolfson. Yes, that's her, Tracy okay. Wolfson. It was when Auburn was had Cam Newton, and I remember they she was like doing a report from the sidelines where they put, cam, it was called cam juice. Mm. And they had it in a Gatorade bottle. And they were like saying like, it's a special flavor of, of uh, hydration to get him back. And then she like drinks it like on the end. And I look and you can see the players like Cam Newton all that. And they die laughing. Like they just like, <laughs> run, cause they were like, we got her. Like she, in fact, she went in. I'm like, stop doing those things. You know, like just be, 
Don't don't well, put on like the hat. That. So don't she do all was, that uh, stuff. Did she have it up like this? I mean, she did. She, yes. Did she have it? okay. Yeah. Making sure. Yeah. She 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 played she she did she played right into their hands. That's tough. It's a tough look. It is a tough look. Cam Newton, quite the quite the the silly goose. He is. Yeah. Quite the quite the character. I think almost not as funny as Jameis Winston, but uh, nobody is funnier than Jameis Winston. I, I, I would have loved James to be Winston. a Florida State college student when Jameis oh, Winston man. was there. I bet he was just a man when he jumped up in the middle of the union and oh yeah, said the said the meme, said the oh, phrase, yeah. and everyone. It, it was, was like a national story. Like that's what cracked me up. He said that <laughs> well, it's a that, national story that whole week because then he that's you know that's the game he got suspended for uh, against Clemson for the crab legs or was that no because no no of that? that was for the f her. Oh. You know, yeah. Ah, it was because of that he had to miss like the Clemson game, and this is weirdly enough back when Clemson was not as good. So like Florida State was favored by like twenty, and they didn't have Jameis Winston, and they ended up winning, but it was close. But he like tried to he like put on his full uniform. It was like out there at warmups, and Jimbo Fisher's just like, buddy, you're what not, you you're you're suspended. That means like you don't <laughs> you, you don't get to wear all that. Like nah. <laughs> oh man, Jameis, famous Jameis, and as uh. You you strong, yeah, quite you strong the, we strong then. See, he no. was like he was like I don't want to say wholesome, but he was like the PG thirteen version of Johnny Manziel. Yeah, because he, he was, was like really fun, nice. He just liked to do to watch, stupid stuff, and he was like kind of a kind of a silly goose. But he wasn't like doing coke uh, in the frat houses. Right. He was just yelling up seeding things in libraries. Yeah, and, and stealing crab legs, and stealing crab legs, and then like saying phrases that made us laugh. Although, by the way, have you that. the crab leg story? I'm pretty sure he got a raw deal there. Apparently, the, some dude at the store had been giving him crab legs for free for months. And then he just came so in to get just, his I guess that monthly would have, crab leg, and they're like, oh, now we're now ooh, they changed their policy. I, I guess at know. that point in time, if you had someone giving him crab legs, then that would have been ineligible in, in because it was a... Yeah. So that's probably why they made the story. Why they probably didn't steal him yeah. ever, but they just said he did, so that way he could still play. That Framing a it. young black athlete. I tell you what, unbelievable. In, in this day and age. Despicable. Yeah. It's amazing that was like 10 a, a years ago. A stand-up citizen like Jameis Winston. <laughs> it's amazing that was like 10 years ago. When he said yeah. that they played Clemson, I wonder who the backup quarterback was because I'm sure it was one of the quarterbacks from Last Chance U because they had like three straight seasons yeah, like, of Last Chance U where like one of the quarterbacks was, whether it was John Franklin the third or... Uh, <laughs> John um, Franklin the third, yeah. Yeah, and then they oh, had, I forgot uh, the other one. Was it Woodson they, was the last name maybe? DeAndre something. Yes, DeAndre something. And then he went yeah. to FAU and was never that good. Yeah, yeah so it could have been one of those Then guys. they had a Malik... Uh, Malik Something. Malik keep, something. Every time I hear Malik, I just want to say Hornsby, which I is know. so weird. I, for so, some reason, I was thinking do that. Malik Newman. Who, who, what's that kid's name? It's not Malik Henry is his name. Malik, that's the kid's yes, name. Yes, Malik Henry. Yep, that's it. That's it. Uh, a few people here in the comments. Caleb says, y'all should get Cade and Lawson on the show every week and give them the deserved show time that they need. I agree. I mean, I, that's I not agree. the worst idea ever, no. No. He would be, uh, they both would be pretty great just to talk about the stuff going on, you know. We they, we not we might not be able to book them. They're a little big time after they've been getting some PT lately. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we may Cade, have to actually. Cade, we were worried about Cade's injury status up until I guess last night. That was his return game. You know, because he yeah, was banged up. He had he had the boot. He was in the he was in the rehab room. We couldn't get him booked. That's true. And now he's too popular. Yeah, we're just gonna have to hopefully maybe uh, just ask nicely and be able to get that too. Uh, Jeremy also says, uh, "Why do I feel like they just wear this on a regular basis?" Talking about the antlers, I think they do. I think that's their thing is they do dress like that. For, for different reasons. I don't know, but either way. Uh, let's see. Some of these I can't put out. And <laughs> in fact, a lot of them I can't. It's usual. I see a good one, though. All right. Well, uh, well, actually, there's been a few of them, too, that are good ones. Where's the ones? Uh, Hayden Ballard's comment is the one that oh, I that, really okay, was impressed yeah, yeah, with. Okay, yeah. John, Andrew, Curtis, or Scotty? Who wins in a fist fight? It's kind of like Curtis. I, think, I, think, I feel like I mean, it's, Curtis it's like is politics. a big guy. It's like politics. You can't vote on yourself. So it's I'm like, not going to vote on myself. Uh, I have none of us have any martial arts training of any variety. No, I don't believe. Right. Unless Scotty so. low key, like just is a black belt in something. Yes. Yeah. Cur Curtis. Curtis, I feel like is probably going to beat us one because he's larger than all of us. True. Substantially. He's not like a not Jack, but he's six, four. He's got the reach advantage. And I feel like I'm a way more than everybody, though, how, to be honest. How, what, what you pushing these days, John? I'm at I'm at two ten, two fifteen. I don't weigh two fifteen anymore. I, I know not anymore. So yeah, I've been so. I've been I've been low before the people at Natty State Sports don't know that are just tuning in now. They they have only known me for a few weeks. They don't know I used to be a fat ass, Same. former fat ass Andrew Ellis. Same. We both well, I'm were in current. That. I'm like still a fat ass, but I'm not as much as I was. Like 
few months ago, I was I got to a point where I was like, I gotta I gotta lose some weight. <laughs> <laughs> got to do something about this. So yeah, Curtis might be able to get me now that I've lost my low center of gravity and my girth. Yeah, you know, he might. I'll, I'll give Curtis. I think he would jab me to death. Yeah, I, my my vote would probably be Curtis. Although, like uh, Scotty's, you know, the, like the the silent assassin. The but it was Scotty. Protector. If you catch it, if if the right context, I could see Scotty going nuts. Mm-hmm. I've seen him gamble and he gets really intense. He does. And I'd be like, dude, how much you got on this game? He's like three fifty, <laughs> three dollars and fifty cents. I'm like, bro, what? But yeah, Dude, if, if intense, I see him get man. intense, so I bet if, if if it came down to it, Scotty would probably give us a run for our money. Well, hundred percent. Like I know no one's gonna vote on me, and that's fine. You know, I'm more of a lover, not I mean, a fighter, I, you know, anyways. You, we need to book you and me on pay per view just just to see, just to find out. You know, no disrespect, just to find out. No, I think you you have like a decade of uh, Youth youthfulness on you. and on it. So yeah, I'm, I'll wait until you're like 47 and you've really let yourself go, and then I'll challenge you. Yeah, Scotty's over here in the comments saying I used to wait on 205. I'm at 160 now. So Scotty was husky back in the day. So Scotty's going to have to be in the welterweight division. We're going to have to <laughs> put him in there if that's the case. Uh, Kingsley says Scotty definitely has some type of secret black ops training. Y'all don't know about though. <laughs> Scotty yes, actually just we that's we true. didn't know this about him, but He's he apparently Marine. was a special forces agent overseas, and we we didn't know about it. It's pretty crazy. That's true. It's true. Like the, the the video game Call of Duty Black Ops was yeah, he because, it was Scotty's stuff. story. That was his daily life. Yeah, that was his daily life. That's what he had to deal with too. So, <laughs> oh jeez, glad how that all kind of happened. And so, uh, let's see, <gasps> NIL fundraising cage match, there you steel go. cage match. Yeah, I'm sure that'll go over well. I'm sure the U of A would approve of that. Uh, let's see. Caleb says, Hey John, any news on the Arkansas and the new NCAA game? You can email the schools and see what all has been submitted. What are your thoughts on what would be in the game for Arkansas? You know, I don't know. I've been still kind of bummed about this because I still feel like the game's going to suck. But (sighs) it's still going to be better than not having a game. It's true. It will be. But it's just not going to. I'm not expecting much. But hopefully they just make it look good. Like I'm like the game would needs to be fun. But I feel like the presentation is what made that college football game. The NCAA football so much fun is like was the mechanics great. I mean, I don't know. It's all we had to go on, but I just hope they make the presentation good and makes the the vibe of it and the the, the pageantry and yeah. tradition and all that. I mean, I, I think I think we'll still have a good time. We'll find I'll a way pl- to. I'll have still a good buy time. it. Yeah, I'll I'm definitely gonna buy it. Yeah, you know, I, things do not have to be quality for me to buy them. No, <laughs> no. I'm, I make much worse purchases on a much regu- more regular basis. So Although I, I with video games these it. days, how expensive they are. I got to like. Yeah. I got like you can't just go out and rent them anymore like you used to be able to. No, either. that red box, dude. When I was in college, I used to red box games and I'd do it two or three times sometimes if I needed. Yeah, well, Blockbuster was still a thing when I was younger, so it's like that's how we used to do it with our Blockbuster card. And Blockbuster should come back. I think we're almost full circle in society. To Blockbuster's gonna gonna make its way back. Dude, and if you think about it, it was pretty expensive. Think about like if you got a new release movie for you get one night rental and it's five bucks. Yeah. I'm like, no wonder y'all went under. It's like it's just like when people are. When I'd have a friend over, we would scan the aisles for because it's like we knew we'd get one. It's like we cannot, yep. we cannot screw this up. We yep. got to pick a good one. Yeah, and, and it was always bench warmers every single time. We always land on bench warmers. That's why? Like, ben, why bench warmers? We of literally. I'm not even kidding. I think my mom finally bought us bench warmers because we tried to rent it like a third time, and she was like, "All right, I'm done renting this movie. We're just gonna buy it for y'all, and y'all can just watch it every night." Bench warmers. Bench Is that warmers. the one with uh, David Spade in it and yeah. Rob Schneider and the guy that played Napoleon Dynamite? Gus Bus. Yeah. John Heater. I think I saw that movie once. I'm like, this is dumb. Well, if, if, if you were movie, my age when it came out, the age I was, I it was peak. I was the target audience for bench warmers. I think I was seven or eight when I first watched it. It's the funniest thing I'd ever seen. It is amazing how sometimes those movies that were really like, I thought the Austin Powers movies were so funny as yeah. a kid. People, people love those movies. Yeah. And but like, I went, I think it was on TV the other day and I like rewatched for like first time ever. I'm like, this was really dumb. You have to and like you have to suspend disbelief yes. and just get down. You have to get to that level. Yep, you know? Yes, but it was just so weird because I'm like, man, that looked terrible. That looked terrible. But either way, uh, folks, keep those comments coming because I know we got a lot to discuss and a lot to keep talking about here on the show. We're gonna talk football because yeah. weird situation. I say what's weird. It's just one of those things for Razorback football where they lose one of their best signees for some reason. <laughs> And, you know, we're going to have to talk about it. So we will here in just a little bit. But, folks, first I got to tell you about our friends at Alumni Hall. Again, getting ready for baseball season. Get you something from Alumni Hall. You can go online at nattystatesports.com slash alumni hall and be able to see all the different Razorback apparel items that they have to choose from. They have the new baseball hats. They have jerseys. They have shirts. They have polos. 
The weather is getting so nice right now, I'm going to get spoiled by it, but it gets you in the mood for baseball season. So get into the mood for Razorback baseball season with Alumni Hall. You can also check out their store, which they have so many different things to choose from, and they're conveniently located right there on North College at 3417 North College, right there next to Whole Foods. And when you go in, you got a great staff that's going to help you out in any way that they can, and the different brands that they have to choose from, whether it's Nike, Columbia, Peter Millar, Southern Tide, they got it all. No matter what it is, make Alumni Hall your number one stop for your Razorback shopping experience for all things apparel. You can also shop them online at nattystatesports.com slash alumni hall. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll get into some football news as well as more of your comments here on the John Neighbors Show live from Natty State Sports Studio. So stay with us. We're not done yet either. So don't be satisfied because we're not done. We're not done yet either. So don't be satisfied because we're not done. We're not done yet either. For Arkansas. Every time you put a mic in my face, I'm going to say Arkansas. The John Neighbor Show is live from the Natty State Sports Studios. Welcome back into the John Neighbor Show here live from the Natty State Sports Studios. Appreciate everybody listening in on this beautiful day here in the great state of Arkansas. I am your host, John Neighbors, and I know that uh, we've been having a lot of fun getting you ready for the weekend, but wanted to bring this up real quick before we continue on, folks, for those of you who are live streaming and who are going to be in the area and all that. Uh, just know that tomorrow on the John Neighbors Show, we are taking it on the road for the very first time here with Natty State Sports because we are going to be at Wright's Barbecue in Johnson, best barbecue you'll ever get in the entire state of Arkansas. That's right, Wright's Barbecue in Johnson. We're going to be broadcasting live there from 4 to 6 as they will be having the Big Pig Fund, which, of course, is going towards Razorback student-athletes in the NIL and also dealing with the uh, Razorback offensive linemen specifically. They're going to be out there in attendance, so we'll be able to hang out with them and us and the guys. We're going to be out there talking with some of the offensive linemen and having a good old time there, too. So be sure to come on out if you're in the area to Wright's Barbecue in Johnson from around 4 to 7 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, and uh, you'll get to see us most importantly, but then maybe some Razorback football players too, if that's what you're into, if that's what you're into. But I uh, just wanted to throw that out there for each and everybody that uh, is going to be interested in coming. But we'll talk more about that and get into some football stuff too. But uh, we also uh, wanted to bring in uh, Curtis Wilkerson, who has uh, decided to grace us with his presence. What's up, Curtis? Hey, folks. How we doing? Yeah. You know, talking about basketball and how like great it was and, you know, big dub and a big win and, you know, all, all the stuff that people really wanted to dive into. So, yeah, it was great. Well, you beat Mizzou. Like it, at the end of the day, you know, if the season becomes a failure, well, it's really not a failure because you beat Mizzou, and that's that's uh, the least we could ask for. Arkansas's I think, one and only rival. That's yeah, right. that's yeah. right. Hey, Gosh. must said it Did last he really? night. Yeah, yeah, he is, dropped the R word. He said he said <laughs> it is a. He said it seems like a rivalry between the fan bases, at least. Yeah, like I, it's, so. it's it's again we could spend all day talking about rivalries and, ri- and what needs to be a rivalry or what n- is not a rivalry or whatever it is. Like we don't need to get into it because it's just. <laughs> but I did see old Drinkwitz at the game last night. That was fun. Look yeah. good, as handsome as always. Yeah, he didn't stay around for some reason though. Wonder where he went. Did he really leave early? 
Well, he usually sits courtside. So, I mean, I didn't see him. He was the one that, like, I think was last year when one of their players hit a three. He was the one that was doing the. the uh, yeah, I uh, remember him doing that. God, I forgot. Uh, about that. Didn't he oh bring man. a sign? This might have been last year, but he brought a sign to the game when they played Kansas. It was like throwing shade at them for getting some NCAA violations. I think like, so. Was he one of these guys up here? Was he one? Was it one of these signs from the Antlers? Uh, <laughs> well, it, is, he, would, he, is, is Eli Drinkwitz one of the Antlers? Is he an Antler. What Drinkwitz does in his uh, in his downtime is is his business, but I wouldn't put it past him. I guess is what I would say. Yeah, yeah, that might be the best way to, to put it. But <laughs> I, I had to show that one more time because it's the most absurd thing of uh, of all time. So, yeah, nice anyways. work, guys. Yeah, yeah, good job. good job. You really helped the team out with the win. <laughs> uh, all right, so a little bit of football news here in for the Razorback football team, which is, you know, it's, it's kind of the slow time of year, I guess, but you still have some things happening when it comes to the uh, spring practice, I guess, revving up. I think that's in early March, early mid-March, usually mm-hmm. when that gets going. So I'm sure people will be all in on all, bo- all on board on that. But uh, this was a pretty weird deal, but significant. Ashton Bethel Roman, I believe is his name, a four-star wide receiver out of Missouri City, Texas, Rich Point, who signed with Arkansas back in December, has been officially granted his release from the National Letter of Intent with the Razorbacks. This is according to a team spokesman. And it's also according to Wholehawksports.com. Says he is expected to sign with another program next week. Missouri. Oh, man, good, good. They needed to be, they need more. They needed more players that Arkansas wanted. Uh, he was recruited by Kenny Guyton, who left for Wisconsin, which is what some people were saying. Oh, he must be going to Wisconsin, but probably not. <laughs> Uh, cause he, he was, uh, he was a, uh, like I could, I also forgot too of Ronnie Fouch being the new wide receivers coach for Arkansas. I almost forgot his name, but, uh, he was six one one seventy. He had 20 scholarship offers, including Texas tech, Oregon, Nebraska, Ole Miss, Purdue, TCU, Baylor, Houston, and Kansas state last June. And he was also the third highest rated prospect that Arkansas had on their signing class. So yeah, that, that great. sucks. Anytime you, uh, you lose one recruit and you drop you know, like four or five spots in the national rankings. That's, it's probably not the kind of guy that you want to lose. That's tough. But I remember, I'm pretty sure he was the kid that on national signing day, like right as Sam Pittman was getting started with his presser, uh, but he like got distracted as he was running through it. And he was like, Oh, sorry. I just got the, I got the thumbs up on Bethel Roman. Like they found out at that point that he was going to sign. Cause it was iffy like leading up to that. Yeah. So I don't know how, you know, super <laughs> locked in he was the entire time if it came down to that. But yeah, it's uh that's unfortunate. And when they lost, uh, who was the who was the in-state kid? Was it uh, another one, yeah, Crutchfield, Crutchfield, who yeah. also received. When they lost him, like yeah. that was that was kind of the bandage that made everybody feel better. It's like, oh well, they got Bethel Roman; it'll be fine. Well, well, no, you, know. you don't. Yeah, not anymore. That's tough. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's just <laughs> <laughs> like what's what I going to know do? the timeline here? Like why? Like why now? Like what? What was it but that happened now? I that love was that like, we have terms like commit and sign and like all these things that we throw out in our reel and it's like none of it really means they anything just, it's they like should you just, just take um, nli out of the vocabulary at this point it yeah. just confuses people no it really does like, because i literally was reading it the other day and i was like nl i'm like oh yeah the national literature oh yeah forgot that, that, that was an ac- acronym yeah. but uh yeah it's tough i mean a signature on a binding contract that doesn't mean anything yeah that's, they need to go full-on free agency in college sports just full-on like coming out of high school you got to sign you sign your you one year deal, that. you sign yeah. your two year deal. If you can commit a guy to four years, right. he's got to stay for four years. Like you gotta you gotta and this other, I think there would I, you know what, guys, I might have fixed college sports. Because <laughs> then you think about it, everybody who's like, Oh, but we hate having to do the portal thing. Well, you can convince some guy, you can pay him a lot more, but you gotta do him for a four year deal or whatever. Just there you saying. go. There you go. Yeah. It's your three year deals, your two year deals. It's really not that crazy. Yeah. Actually, your, I don't your team guess, options, your player options. Yeah. Let's go. Let's do it. I'm guessing that this kid was not one of the early enrollees. Like, that would stink. Like, if you're on campus already, you know. Oh, if, no, I can't imagine. There's right? no way. That would and be I know awkward most of and more, weird. But, but I mean, that, I don't know if he, <laughs> he, if he signed in December. School, if he signed in like December, then he is, right? Is, am I, is well, that my understanding or not? Nah, like you have, not you have an option. Like I you think it depends on when you go. graduate and everything from high school. But like yeah. you, you can or you can't. But at this at this stage, like most of them do. I know there was at least one or, or a handful that weren't. He he's probably one of them. I can't imagine like moving in, being on campus for two weeks, and being like, you know, like like this this, this Petrino guy is not for me. Like mm-hmm. I, I think I'm going to go a different direction. <laughs> yeah, but, I don't know. That is uh that is crazy. But I just love that 
we can do anything we want now. You know, you can just literally sign and do whatever and just not go. And like, yeah. look, I'm not, I'm not actually upset about it. Like, I don't, the kid can do whatever he wants to do, but it's just funny that. We really have reached that point where there are no rules at all. Well, and, yeah. and, and yeah. recruiting especially, it's like we know that there are times where players have things happen, coaches change, and, and everything. Like Kenny Guyton is no longer uh, on the roster right. and that's or on the coaching staff, and that's who he wanted to sign with eventually. But I've, my thing is always this stuff happens all the time. The thing that I always find the most interesting is the timing mm -hmm. because to me, timing can tell a lot of different stories. If for And this is what I mean by it. For an example, if you have a player that's been committed for a long time at, say, the wide receiver position, and then the wide receiver position coach gets fired, leaves, or whatever, and then the next day that guy decommits, okay, you can kind of say, all right, well, that makes sense as to why he decommitted. But when this happens, the timing of it is so odd because, we, yeah, he does, he, Ryan Fouch has been there, but Fouch has been there now for about a month, maybe yeah, I mean, close little, to yeah. it. So he's been there, and if that was the case, was that some? As soon as he got hired, he's like, "No, nah, I'm out." And they're like, "Well, you know, we got the paperwork, we got to sign, and uh, you know, our email's been down, and uh, you know, we can't seem to find the envelopes and the stamps." Like, it was, was it the U of A guy dragging yeah. its feet a little bit, or was he giving it a shot for the month of January to see how it goes? Like, all of those things is just really what makes me wonder the timing of it, where you, you signed on, and. Instead of decommitting or get out of it earlier, it's like, eh, February 1st, I'm out. That dude, I'm they have like, to, uh, sounds like somebody up the bag. <laughs> they do. They need to abolish the December signing period. Like, seriously, I'm, I'm yeah. look, I don't even cover recruiting, but for the people that cover recruiting, it sucks. But also for teams, it doesn't make sense because December is a month where you're firing coaches, you're hiring coaches, you've got transfers out, you've got transfers in. Why in the hell would you move the high school? And I know they still do the signing date in February, but nobody mm. signs then. Like, it's like literally 95. I don't think Arkansas, I literally don't know if they're going to have even maybe, I don't know if anybody's signing in February. But anyways, everyone signs in December because they all kind of have to now. And all these college coaches are having to operate on this ridiculous timeline. One, it's impossible to really do a recruiting class if you if you lose your head coach, obviously. But for a position coach, if you lose a, re a receiver's coach in the month of December, it's it's insane that these kids are having to sign and make that decision in December while all this stuff is up in the air. And I get it, like, you know, there's a calendar and you kind of just got to go with it and teams want to get their rosters set. But it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, and I think the NCAA, like, since they have, con they have the ability to set these dates and to move these periods, it doesn't make any sense why these, why these high school decisions are being made in the middle of the signing period where you've got the holidays, you've got coaches. It doesn't make any sense. Who is it for? Who is benefiting from this? No, it doesn't seem like anybody. Because college coaches yeah. hate it. Pittman's talked about it. He's like, yeah, it sucks. Yeah, well, because when he first it, got hired, it, yeah, when he gets hired, you go right into it. It doesn't make any sense. It, right. it, made, it made sense in the beginning before really the transfer portal and everything got going. Like, yeah. it, like Because yeah. that's a lot of coaches. I, remember, I think it was Nick Saban because uh, it made sense why he was one of the ones that he wanted the early signing period because he looked at it as, hey, I'm getting ready for a national championship, and I, you know, I, I want these kids signed, sealed, delivered, and that way as soon as the, or, you know, the championship when I'm getting prepared for it and all that stuff, I don't have to make up for lost time that everybody else had to jump on. It's basically like, hey, we want them to sign before the bowl games hit, yeah. so that way we have some time to do it. it. It may have made sense at that, but now where you've added into the transfer portal and the transfer portal windows and everything, I mean, it gets to the point to where you know, your, your team is gone because everyone jumped into the portal. Mm -hmm. And then you have the signing class that you're trying to do at the same time while also getting ready for a bowl game at the same time. It's madness. It's chaos. And I never thought I'd say that I'd ever feel sorry for college football coaches, especially the yeah. ones that make millions upon millions of dollars. But it is something that I, it, it seems a little over the top ridiculous that it's that way. Like there's just no need for it. There's no reason for it at this point. And my issue with it is, so if you're Ashton Bethel Roman, and I'm not, I know everybody doesn't want to defend the guy that just decommitted at Arkansas is about Simon Missouri. How do you make that decision? If you're in the middle of December, you've been going all year thinking, I'm going to Arkansas, I'm about to move in, and it's going to be this awesome thing. And then all of a sudden, your position coach that you committed to leaves, the program falls to crap. They hire an OC that's an old geezer you've never heard of, but allegedly he coached good receivers, but you're like, I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. it's very weird. And I'm I'm not I'm I'm mostly joking here. Like, I'm not saying the kid should be decommitting. But it is tough that if you're a college kid trying or you're trying to make your decision here at college, you're having to sign that December while all this stuff's happening. It's just like it really puts them in a tough spot, too. And so it's like 
I'm not I'm not trying to give the kids sympathy for decommitting from Arkansas and getting out of his letter of intent, but it's like I, I feel bad for a lot of these guys that just have to make these decisions on a whim. And he's like signing with like not even sure he wants to sign in the first yeah. place. And now he's having to make what I'm sure is a really tough decision. Again, it's like I don't I feel bad for everyone involved, but obviously it sucks for Arkansas too that they're operating, like you said, John, like they're thinking we sign this guy so we can do this. So we can just move on and focus on building the rest of our roster and the kid leaves. It's it's just a tough situation all around. And I blame the December signing period. It it's never been more difficult to be an incoming freshman in college athletics. Like imagine, you know, like you make this decision to sign or whatever, and then all of a sudden, like the tr- you're in the midst of the transfer portal and you're just thinking, like, man, like I I don't know, like if I was gonna get to play right away or not, yeah. but they're bringing in all these older guys. Oh, and Andrew Armstrong's coming back too, and Isaac Tesla's coming back yeah. too. <laughs> well, and then the yeah. portal window closes, and so maybe you get some peace of mind. You're like, oh, okay, well, you know, I, I got my work cut out for me, but I, I think I can probably handle this. And then Nick Saban retires, and it's like, oh, by the way, everybody on Alabama's <laughs> roster is fair game for the next 30 <laughs> days. And then Jim Harbaugh <laughs> leaves, and it's like, oh, by the way, everybody on Michigan's roster is fair game for 30 days. And so, you know, like it's just, it's, they have these windows, but it's all bull crap. Like it's, you know, like it's just wide open where, you know, like the season ends and the teams that go into the championship game or whatever, you got a bunch of coaching turnover and all those kids can leave all of a sudden. So yeah. if you've gone out into the portal and you've added 15 transfers or whatever to go along with your high school class, well, if I'm Sam Pittman or everybody else, like I'm looking at, damn, like all these teams who are a lot better than us, their players are suddenly available I got to clear some room or I got to go add some more guys. And then I'm going to have to have some difficult conversations with some of these other kids. It just, it is complicated, but like, there's got to be a better way. I agree with you. Like it yeah. has to be a better way. I yeah. was talking to uh, Chris Phillips of SEC unfiltered. Shout out to him, by the way, we were just talking about how in baseball, it's almost an advantage to get bounced early. Like LSU, yeah. the reason yeah. they won that national title is because they right. got Tommy white and all these guys. They were like an Arkansas transfer class that year when they went to Omaha People hate it. They were like, oh, it sucks. Why why, why can't DVH recruit? All of a sudden, they get bounced in the, in the regional. Everybody's mad about that. But then you get Vahiva, you get all these guys. It's like it's almost to your advantage as a college coach to find your windows and be yep. like, uh, all right, we can go for it this year. We're going to push all our chips in here, but then we're going to get screwed in this day, time period. If we make the playoff here, we're going to not be able to do anything. And so, like you're, like you're saying, we've got all these different programs operating on different timelines. They're all doing shady stuff. It's just sketchy, man. All of it's tough and <laughs> We're asking these coaches and these adults and kids to make these decisions on a whim, and they don't know what they're signing up. It's just a disaster, man. It's 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 really kind of stupid that they're doing this. Hey, watch no, Mus- watch Musk cook in portal season yeah. this year. Oh, man. oh if you he's give Musk an extra month, when, he doesn't have the game not, plan. Yeah, he's is not it? like leaving the Gonzaga prep to go do a Zoom with a transfer. Yeah. He's just chilling. Yeah, watch oh, watch yeah. him cook. He's gonna have time. <laughs> I've, I I love the transfer portal. Like I've loved the transfer portal and in, in its spirit and what it's trying mm-hmm. to do. I love. NIO and the spirit of what it's trying to do. But the problem that also goes into this is that the NCAA is completely and totally worthless. I mean, it always has been, but now it like nobody cares what the NCAA says Mm -hmm. and they know it. They're powerless. And so any sort of rules or anything that they put into place, people are going to kind of scoff at, laugh at, you know, move on from or whatever. And so there's just not anybody that can step in. And we the same thing with the NIL stuff. You know, you have states that are different from other states. So there's just – I'm not saying that it's ruining college football. I'm not going to say something that's like, oh, this is just the worst that it's ever been. However, I do believe that somebody like me, at least, have put always so much faith into the people who are in charge of college football, the people who are in charge of everything, and seeing that it's out of their hands even. Like nobody has – nobody can take control of this. That, like the only people that may be able to take some control of it would be television networks, like because that's kind of who holds all the power. Yeah. But they're CBS, not going to be in charge of that. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like yes, yeah, ESPN, save us and uh, come they'll in. Have, and, and, they'll have a good opinion on this, ESPN, I'm sure. Oh yeah, I'm sure they won't. That will be perfect. But that's but that's the thing is like they hold the power because they got the money. Now the conferences also hold the power, but even the conferences they they all can't. They got you know 16 to 20 different members that all want different things. So it's just at some point in time, there's got to be some sort of correction, whether it's overcorrection or, or something, because this is not a sustainable product. This is not a sustainable thing. It's just getting worse and worse and worse. And at some point in time, it's going to come crumbling down and it's going to be disgustingly horrible because the thing about football, and you guys know this, yes, college football is king. College football makes the money. College football does that, but it's still college. 
And so if something happens with college football and college and conferences and all this stuff, the other sports, the other things that are involved in universities are really going to start being impacted in a negative way too. Oh yeah. I can't wait till they break the news to Dave Van Horn that he's going to now be in a 32 team conference with Nebraska <laughs> and all. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> By the way, John, did you notice that they uh, updated the SEC baseball tournament format? It's going to be single What'd elimination now. Or it's for next year when the other teams enter the conference, but it's going to be a 16 team single elimination tournament that starts on Wednesday. Why did it take Top them so long? Top four teams get two buy two buys. Why did it take them so long? I don't know. I'm I'm I didn't, I haven't really like sat down and made an opinion on it, but I feel like I'm okay with it. I think it just they have a year and a half to make a decision too. I mean, like the Hoover, the Hoover turn of the 2025 tournament's not till next May. I guess it's true. Yeah, the, I love that though. Like that's the way yeah. it should be. That's the way it's always should have been. Double elimination's crazy, especially if you have yeah, that's wild. The way it has where it was like single elimination, double elimination, single elimination, single elimination. It's like what? I've been following it for years, and I still don't understand how it works. <laughs> like I have to go back every year, or I have to text you and be like, "What? Like, yeah, because what, what it's like the they, first day is single elimination. Correct. Yeah. Like and 10, then the next day, eleven through fourteen. It, yeah, and the next day it's like double elimination, and then. The finals are single elimination. Once you get to the semis, it becomes single elimination yeah. again. So once you get to Saturday, <laughs> so literally it's like so Tuesday dumb. and Tuesday single, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday double, Saturday single, Sunday single. Now it's just going to be single. Y'all all play. You win. You stay. You lose. You go home. Great as God intended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You should be able to go 0-1 in the SEC tournament. That's yeah. how it is in like yes. every other SEC when you, tournament. Yeah, yes. when you can have one bracket for yeah. a tournament, that's great. <laughs> like, instead of like seven different sub Oh, what's our path? Like, oh, well, you might have to play them, and then you might have to play whatever. It's going to be nice from a game planning standpoint. Well, yeah. <laughs> can I ask from – I don't know if you guys know this. Like, is softball the same way? Like the SEC tournaments? I've got no idea. I've never yeah, consumed the SEC softball tournament. <laughs> it was in favor last year. But I was just curious to see if it was the All same right. way before – because. As we've seen, men's yeah. college basketball does a dumb thing that nobody else does, like having two halves instead of four quarters. <laughs> so maybe that's maybe softball was ahead of the game. So I was like, yeah, let's just do single elimination and call it good. They should do the, they on. should do college basketball for when they go to sixteen teams. They should just uh, the SEC should do double elimination sixteen and it's two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> just two, oh my you want to make the tournament? You're gonna grind. You're gonna play nine games in fourteen it's days. It's like the uh, NBA in season <laughs> tournament, but the SEC version of it or the conference yeah. versions of it. Yeah. Yeah, just I like put, it. put that together. I don't know. But, no, I am glad that that's the case. I'm glad that they're going to be doing that. And it's been needed for a while. Yeah. Mm. And All it took was Texas and Oklahoma showing up. Mm. I wonder if anything else is going to be changed as far as formatting of stuff. I know schedules itself are changing, but, like, formatting of any other postseasons. Football's pretty obvious. But it's like, I guess they're going to take the top well, two, right? Yeah, it's just going to be take the top two, which, like... But you're going to have tiebreakers. You're going to have to have some yeah, sort I'm of tiebreaker okay with it. in there. I'm yeah. just, I think it's still better than having... A team come from the east like Missouri made back to back SEC title games right. when it's like no one wanted Bama to see and LSU that. were the two best teams. Clearly, it's yeah, like, the, yeah, the imbalance there for a long time was crazy. Yeah, you're this just gonna be, have a lot of rematches better. though. But like, true, but yeah, I'm fine I, with dude, it. that's gonna be awesome when a college football team plays three times. They, they'll have the same opponent three times because they'll <laughs> probably play them in right like Bama and Georgia regular season playing the SEC championship and then 12 when, team playoff yeah yeah it's gonna yeah. happen oh yeah yeah it'll be like a three game series see but that's what the two. three is definitive yeah it's tough when that's LSU true. and Alabama play twice and it's like well they split their matchups yeah yeah Bama won the big <laughs> ring but LSU won everything else it's like all right three is definitive yeah. no matter what happens with basketball Musk is going to be pissed about it like anytime he gets an opportunity to tee off on the SEC scheduling model like I can just see Musk in all those coaches meetings and he's just like <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be mad, dude. Yeah. Like, should they like? Because for basketball, do you think? I don't know. Because we we could talk about scheduling all day, but like the the basketball stuff, you're gonna have at least 15 opponents you could play. Yes, yeah. you know, excluding yourself for those of you keeping up. Uh, 15 <laughs> opponents. It's 15 games. <laughs> Wouldn't that be kind of fun to like just have 15 games? Even though they will never do that though, because it's not enough money. Because yeah, they want money. Yeah. So it's like. Okay, so you're going to do more than 15, but then what's a fair thing? Are they going to do, okay, 15 games, or you're going to play all 15 opponents, but then we're going to move it to 20 conference games because that way you are able to have a couple opponents you have a home-and-home home with, and these mm -hmm. are the permanent ones, and I, I don't know. I just feel like there's not really a, a winning formula to no, schedule. I think 20 and 10 is the way to go. They'll, this, they'll, yeah, they'll definitely go to 20 for sure. And uh, okay. and he'll be ticked about that. Like if it, unless it's a double round robin, 
Must ain't signing up for it, man. And you just can't do that <laughs> when you get to a certain amount of teams. But he tees off on it all the time. He's like, well, when I was in the NBA. I knew we were going to play this team this many times from the division, this team this many times. And when I was in the Mountain West, it was a double round robin. But this is unbalanced. I don't understand it. Must wants, a, must like, wants a 66-game schedule SEC. Yeah. You, you know, we, we want to play A&M. If we lose the first two, we want to be able to beat them the next four. But know? it is interesting because the Big 12 added all those teams, and they've had the double round robin in the past, and now it's it's different. And Bill Self was going off about it the other day. Now, it's convenient that it happens when they're four and three in the Big 12 for the first time ever. But he was like, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's an unbalanced schedule. So does a regular season title really mean as much? I don't think it does. <laughs> Well, the one you know. time they're not going to win it in the last 30 years. Exactly. He's like, ah, this, this thing no longer matters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know how I many, like, it, like there are so many coaches that do that. And it's, yes. that, that is my favorite thing ever. It's like, it's never a problem until it impacts you. Like, like right. when Nick Saban was completely and totally complaining about, ah, this hurry up, no huddle stuff is just, you know, it's, it's not safe. <laughs> You know, it's, it's, it's killing kids. And it's, and, and then it's all of a sudden like, you got ah, Jalen Hurts, well. and he's like, I don't know, we might want to run. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's, like, it's not so bad. Yeah, it's like, yeah, we see this guy. He's like, yeah, this guy, this is actually pretty fun. It's pretty good, pretty effective. So, but yeah, it's always when, you know, coaches have problems with it that, I don't know. I, like, that's something that, but, but like the thing with Nick Saban is the hurry up, no huddle stuff. That didn't change. Like, he just had to adapt. Yeah. So, I don't know. Like, I, I also wish that there was a more of a distinguishment between a regular season title and a tournament title because, it yeah. seems like it, depending on whatever you win, that's the most important one. If you win the SEC tournament, oh yeah, we won that. That's we're the best. But uh, I don't know. I've always felt like in at least basketball, if you want to opt out of it, you can't. You should be able to. That's always been my opinion. Even Ooh, baseball yeah. too. If you could, if you're like able that. to opt out, like Arkansas mm -hmm. last year in the SEC baseball tournament, they knew they were getting a national seed. Should opt. They out. knew they were hosting. They 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 did they blew what I guess tied for the regular season title I believe with Vanderbilt or yeah, maybe not whatever they shared, like, they, they shared it with Florida I think that's what it was uh, yeah Florida they shared lost it. to Vanderbilt to share it with Florida. That, that's, that's right. okay that's what it was yeah so like <laughs> they just then they just okay hey listen we're we're packing it up we're taking an extra week of rest and uh, we're gonna get ready for our regional like that's I rest feel like versus that be rust fair. though John then we gotta have that conversation like it's. It'll never end. We'll be pissed off all the time. I know. Like we're never going to be. <laughs> that happens happy. in the NFL whenever the team sits their starters. I mean, hey, the Ravens. I guess they won their divisional game, but they rested Lamar on week eighteen and then had a bye week. It's fair to wonder if uh, it took them a little, little while to get out of first gear against the Texans. Sometimes it can go backwards on you if you don't play. So, I just want it to have as least amount of games as possible in Hoover. And I want to yeah. spend as little amount of time as I possibly can <laughs> in Hoover because apparently all the SEC baseball coaches love Hoover because they all voted to keep it there. Yeah, that was unanimous. Mm, that made me so mad. I'm like, you, you not even, not one, not one Texas of you guys. Texas fans are going to hate going to Hoover, man. I could just feel, they're like, going to bring a good crowd, but it's like, they're going to be like, wait, why are we going As long there? as you don't give them horns down, they'll be okay. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, thank goodness. I'm sure that won't happen in Hoover. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, How do you, you feel about you, Hoover? You couldn't do one. I actually, weirdly one. enough, don't hate Hoover. Okay. But... Hey, yeah, I, we've I, talked I about this. I wouldn't yeah. be. A, I wouldn't like. I'm not gonna be offended if they leave. Yeah. It just rains in Hoover all the time. But uh, as a place, I mean, I went there for a wedding not too long ago. I had a great time. I've been close to there a couple times. It's John, way better actually. than Birmingham, believe it or not. Like as a city, Birmingham is sucks. It? Well, yeah. It's I mean, yeah, Birmingham place. blows. Hoover is like better. Is like legit better than Birmingham. But my my thing is is just like you play in the Georgia Dome for SEC football championship. <laughs> You play in Nashville at the, uh, what is Bridge it? The Bridgestone. Yeah, yeah, well, Bridgestone they, Arena. They've had some stinker SEC tournaments before. But, you, but before you played in Tampa, you played in, yeah. uh, you had it in Dallas one time. Yeah. I think you had it Charlotte. in Atlanta one time. Yeah. I know you did, actually. They had huh? it in St. Louis. St. Louis Dome. one time. Yeah. So at least you gave it some options. They need to be having it at the Bass Pro Shops. I mean, come on. But it's like, <laughs> but the fact that the Big 12 Baseball Championship has been at Globe Life yeah. and yours is at Hoover, the <laughs> SEC is at Hoover. Yeah. That to me is what bothers me. It's like I get it. It's not nothing against the city and the, and the stadium per se, but it's like if you're the SEC, you're the creme de la creme. You're the best conference. You need to have, you need to have nice stuff. You're the best thing. It's like that's why we're the best media company because we have the nicest office. It's the same thing. You got to have a nice arena and a nice stadium to play your games in because if you want to be the best. You got to look like you're the best. They you can't do that it. in Hoover. <laughs> they need to do it at the old Turner Field in Atlanta. Did they that tear would be it awesome. down? Standing? I don't know. They might have tore it down. It'd that would be, cool be awesome. I think they tear. I think they tore it down. I'd, I'd love that. Just do but it. But no, that'd be awesome. Uh, I mean, that new park in Atlanta, SunTrust, is cool. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I'm down for all of it. Yeah. I, just, I also want to, to have uh, – my only thing is it's always been about what's easy to get to, and Hoover's not easy to get to. For no, like, yeah, no. Like, you can fly to Atlanta. You can fly to Dallas. You can fly, you know, places like – you can fly to Nashville even. But, like, to fly to, – to get to Hoover – It's only convenient for LSU fans, which is why they always show up and – I know Chill that's out. another thing I'm so sick and tired of. There's like, oh, the LSU faithful, they're always here. It's like, okay, yes, it's because they're a great baseball program, but also because, like you said, it's convenient. Right. That'd be like if the, you know, SEC championship was in Kansas City. We'll just throw it out there and raise your back. Oh, hey. Raise your back fans are just showing up right <laughs> and left. It's like, I wonder why, because it's so convenient. When the, hey, when the Royals get that new downtown ballpark in a few years, we'll float it for consideration. Mm-hmm. And Arkansas I baseball needs to play in Kansas City at, at uh, is it Kaufman? They, play, they played at Kaufman against uh, Kansas State. Oh, one that's year. right. I do remember <laughs> it that. It was not a fun game. <laughs> they need to do that, and they need to bring back playing Arkansas Missouri football in Arrowhead. Because remember that was going to yeah, happen. Yeah, in 2020. yeah, that does need to happen. Sure. That was happening yeah. in 2020 and COVID. That was going to be a great year going to Notre Dame. I mean, Arkansas probably wasn't going to be any good. Damn, but going, I forgot about that yeah, one too. Man, going to Notre Dame. Yeah. In Missouri, and because you're three road, you only had three road games that year. Again, uh, well, no, you only had two true road games because you had Missouri up there in Arrowhead, and you had AM and Arlington, yeah. and then Auburn, Mississippi State. Your home games would have been Bama, LSU, Tennessee. I think those were the only, or what was the fourth one that you had? Oh, Ole Miss. So, Jeez. And at Notre Dame, yeah. I said it would have been great. Curtis, make a phone call to pandemic. Bush and see if they can do it at Bush, the SEC baseball tournament. Yeah. Dude, I Why love not? Bush Stadium. Ballpark it's, Village. Yeah. it's Dude, St. Louis is awesome. It'd be yeah. a great – it really would be a good venue for it. I'd, I mean, I'd be fine with that. They just need I'd to add a few more Big that. 12 teams, and then it'll make sense for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the only thing is, is I guess, like, if you think about national ballparks, though, or like MLB ballparks, you know, Nashville doesn't have a team – a professional team like New Orleans doesn't have a team. Right. Uh, is a AAA ballpark big enough? That's what I was thinking. Well, like it's the, just tough that the Big 12 has got the sounds. Sounds, thing. yeah. And there is a AAA ballpark in New Orleans. I even think where the Redbirds play in Memphis would be cool. That's actually a pretty nice Springfield. Yeah. Pretty nice stadium, I love, I love man, the yeah. Springfield park, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> like, I hope people are listening because we got some good options here. Yeah, really. Yeah. 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 These ideas have never been discussed before. I'm, no. sure. I'm, sure. I'm sure the SEC baseball Brand coaches new. are... Yeah, they're just like, wow, these guys are, but we know these guys are on it, man. The these guys. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, we know Dave's listening, obviously. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dave Dave is for sure listening. Dave's for sure listening, which we appreciate you, Dave, yeah. as always. But um, we uh, got to tell you about something else, too, that we're very excited about. Manscaped is officially I, on board with Natty State Sports and what we're doing here on the John Neighbor Show. In fact, Curtis over there has a really nice Manscaped shirt that he's rocking. I right put there. on a hoodie. What, just what does so the I caption say on Manscaped there, Curtis? Uh, that would be um, your balls. Well, thank you. Now, who doesn't want to be thanked by their balls? Yeah. And that's what Manscaped One thing does I've for you. I've never been thanked by. Yeah. And for those, <laughs> for those of you that uh, don't know what Manscaped is all about, it's just that. It's the grooming greatness that makes us guys be able to have the grooming sensations that we all have, want to have and love, especially for all you ladies out there. Your man. Maybe a little on the hairy side. Maybe look like a little bit like a Chewbacca. You know, you don't want that. Nobody wants that. So that's what Manscaped is able to do for you. And if you go to their website, manscaped.com right now, use promo code Natty, N-A-T-T-Y, promo code Natty. You do that, you get 20% off, and you also get free shipping. So head over to manscaped.com and check out the Beard Hedger, which is one of their 4.0 versions of, of the razors that is just top of the line, the greatest you'll ever see and the greatest you'll ever have. And it's a sensational feeling. Believe me, I would know. So check it out today, manscaped.com. Again, enter in promo code Natty for 20% off as well as free shipping. Check them out today. It's manscaped.com. We'll take another break and come back with more of the John Neighbor Show here live from Natty State Sports Studios. Stay with us. We're not done yet either. So don't be satisfied because we're not done. We're not done yet either. So don't be satisfied because we're not done. We're not done yet.
Nashville is 1,843 miles away, but the call of the Hawks can be heard all the way to San Francisco. Let's take my dick in the mashed potato. Go Hawks. Powered by Arkansas for Arkansas. Every time you put a mic in my face, I'm going to say Arkansas. The John Neighbors Show is live from the Natty State Sports Studios. Welcome back into the John Neighbors Show here live from Natty State Sports Studios. Appreciate everybody listening in and watching in on this beautiful day here in the great state of Arkansas. And remember, uh, tomorrow we're going to be broadcasting live from Wright's Barbecue in Johnson. So we are really pumped up and excited about that because there are so many great different items to choose from. But we're going to be hanging out there with some Razorback offensive linemen. We'll be able to talk to some of them, too. Josh Braun will be one of them, guy that... uh, Look forward to meeting and catching up with and uh, doing some stuff here in the near future. So if you're in the area, come on out and support the great cause of the Big Pig Fund. That's going to be uh, having them with great food and great times. And I think they have 10 offensive linemen coming to that, something like that. Nice. So I wonder, I wonder where they cut the, where they drew the line. They were looking, they had them lined up and they were like, ah, you're not making the cut. You're not coming to rights <laughs> tonight, man. Go to Central. Yeah, that would ooh, that would be a that would be a thing where it's like, yeah, I wonder how the how that all works. Yeah. Should have weighed them, you know. Anybody who hasn't hit their goal yet, it's like, all right, yep. yeah, you got to get over there. There was one time that the offensive line signed some nil deal, and they signed like the entire starting O line, and like Brady Latham had j- like Bo Limmer had just been inserted for Brady Latham, but wasn't. But then Brady Latham was in the graphic, and I was like, wait a minute, they, I wonder where they <laughs> when did they film this? Because the starting line has changed. You know, I remember there being a thing I, like actually, that. Actually, well, I got to correct myself. It was actually 15 people that are coming. Oh, oh so you got a three deep. Okay, that's yeah, most yeah, of the scholarship the guys. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's there was a point in time where Arkansas didn't have 15 scholarship <laughs> offensive linemen. No, not at all. They not were all 275 pounds too. <laughs> <laughs> well, the roster of people that will be good there will be Josh Braun, Patrick Kudas, Tommy Verhall. Verhall, I think is how you say his name. Uh, Brooks Edmondson, Andrew Chambly, Aaron Smith, Fernando Carmona. He's the one from San Jose State, I yeah, believe. Yeah, right? new guy. Yeah, yeah. Aaron Smith, uh, I mentioned him, Brock Burns, Josh Street, TJ Don, Paris Patterson, Amarian Harris. Heard his name all the time. Because why wouldn't he be? Mal Mail. Keyshawn Blackstock, male. who's the transfer from Michigan State. Uh, Zuri Madison, Amari Wiggins, Kobe Branham. Kai Hamilton, and Addison Nichols. So cool. that will be who out there. So uh, Paris Patterson, time. large man. Paris Patterson is very large. Oh. oh yeah, he's the yeah, and he's actually lost weight too, I believe, and he's yeah. still like he might be the, uh, the size of a planet. I think he's from East St. Louis. Yeah, big, yeah, he is. He played, dude. dude yeah. His high school in O line, he was like the third best one. They had like their whole O line went to like Michigan, Alabama, TCU. Like I think it was their whole starting O line. We're hyping him up. It's, he was a freshman last year. He's got a future. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And Curtis found out he was from St. Louis. He's like, oh, I love this. Oh, yeah, this, this, this guy. Big this guy, guy from St. Louis. <laughs> love him. <laughs> yeah. It is funny how, like, we always do that, though, just in – because I do the same thing. The kid's, like, from Fayetteville. I'm like, oh, man, that kid. Yeah. Love that oh. kid. He's a good kid. I'm also <laughs> that way stuff. with the large ones. Whenever there's a huge one, like Devin Manuel, I just looked at him once. I was like, I like that guy. Big yeah, fella. Big. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And even I remember seeing uh, – oh, what was the guy? The guy that was, like, a wrestler that was just an offensive lineman a couple years ago. Dalton Wagner. Dalton Wagner. Yeah, but he was almost like 6'10", right? Yeah, he yeah, was yeah, a big yeah. boy. Yeah, he was one that, like, I was a freshman when I saw him. I was like, oh, man, you look you look like you are belong in the WWE, which I guess he did a little well, bit. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. I mean, so maybe he'll good. be there real soon. We'll he see might him. be. We'll see how he's doing at the development center. I was looking for him at the Royal Rumble. Yeah, I had him <laughs> at plus nine, nine million to win the Royal Rumble, <laughs> Dalton Wagner. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, by the way, Trey asked on our uh, comments here, Trey, Says, will uh, Natty State be getting in the NIL ball game? You bet your sweet bippy yeah, we, we are. Y'all How do you think know. me and Curtis are here? You think we came here for no reason? Yeah. Name, image, and likeness is all I cared about from them. So uh, <laughs> we wanted to have it here. Our name's State valuable. Sports. Our image. I mean, yeah. The likeness. I mean. It's questionable. It's there. For the Natty it's... State video game that's coming out. We're yeah. Gonna have... <laughs> yeah. The Natty State uh, bobbleheads that we're going to be putting out. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. All that stuff that people will really buy up into. But yeah. No, we're going to be getting into it, and there will be some details on that here coming up very soon, folks. So uh, be sure to stay tuned for that. Uh, I wanted to bring this up, too, some other uh, Razorback, I guess, baseball news. I know Andrew's so excited about this news. This is huge news, folks. Big news. Big, big news. Because Arkansas has nine nationally televised baseball games. Love that. Come on. This baseball season. <laughs> Not regional televised like on any of those crapper wares like Jefferson, Jefferson Pilot, Pilot, man. We're talking about the big stuff. SEC Network. Mm-hmm. It's so funny. Like, are there? You think there's any human beings that are like Arkansas baseball fans who like these are the only nine games they watch? Because if you want to watch Arkansas baseball, you have the ESPN app. 
And if you have the ESPN app, it you doesn't really matter if it's on TV or not. You know, like TV is is just relative these days. Right. Yeah, you people might be watching this on a TV. So it's like if you watch us on TV, you can watch Arkansas baseball. I wonder like who this news like really if there's anybody who's like, oh, can only watch them when they're on TV. It's kind of interesting to me that only one of these games is a road game. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like Arkansas would be, you know, a team where if someone was hosting them, like, that's one you'd want to put on television, you know? Yeah. It's kind of interesting. How yeah. about, uh, well, I guess both you know, of those Texas Tech games. I was going to say, how about the two yeah. midweek games against Texas Tech yeah. being on national television? Yeah, there ain't ESPN else on. Uh, I remember Arkansas lost a midweek game to Oklahoma a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. On national television, I think it was that 2021 season, right? Yeah, yes, and it was like it their was. second yep. loss of the year. I do and remember people that. were like really pissed about it, and I was like, "Man, why is everybody <laughs> freaking out?" It's because it was like the only game on TV. So yeah, there's like a bunch people of people watched who, for the like first their first time. time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you got two LSU games on uh, on national TV of ESPN two, the Deuce. Uh, so you're gonna have oh, that wow. two of those games, two of the Texas Texas you mentioned, one of those being on ESPN two. SEC Network having the Texas Tech game is always interesting, you know, because One's not in the SEC, but that's neither here nor there. And then Florida is the other one that you're going to have two of the games on, and that is SEC Network on the 26th, but then noon ESPN two. So, dude, that Florida series when it comes around, it's gonna, it's gonna be, be so electric because like that's really the time when people really start turning it up and paying attention. Late April, the weather and starts to get really Florida nice. Florida will probably yeah. be top three. Arkansas will probably be top three. It's gonna be, it's gonna be good. Yeah, I just hope the weather is like nice instead of. That's another terrible. thing is I bet you know I'm just predicting here. That'll be a route right when the weather's starting to literally heat up. Yeah, literally. And so does the action on the field. The bats, they'll all be hot, John. Yeah. We'll be hot. We'll be hot. Yeah, that's yeah, we'll, for sure. We'll, we'll be hot and bothered and getting after it. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, national games, television, television stuff happening. So, great. Great, great for the baseball team. Yeah. I mean, I get it. It's like kind of a cool deal, too, but it just does really take me back to a time where it's like, man, I, if you were on – national tv and anything if you're on espn yeah. 2 that was a big deal because i even remember i believe it was in 04 when arkansas went to the world series that year with of course brady tubes hitting the grand slam but then i believe they closed out against florida state at home in the supers and that final game was on espn and i remember mm, it was the, the biggest right? deal i don't know i don't think it was a walk-off um it was like a walk-off double right no, I don't think so. Not not no. I mean, that confusing years. I think it's oh nine is what you're thinking. They of. did beat. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right. Oh four was one. I first, I think uh, I forgot who the pitcher was. But anyways, it didn't matter. It was yeah. just I remember being on ESPN and like blowing people's pants off. They're like, whoa, college <laughs> baseball is on ESPN. Yeah. And now it's like you know you get it anywhere and anytime, any place. We're spoiled. We're very yeah. Spoiled well, I mean, now. like that's why it's like Chuck Barrett. I really he was the way I consumed Arkansas baseball for like ten years. You know, up until yeah. I got into like. I guess the SEC Network was 2013 or 14 when it finally... 2014, yeah, I believe, yeah. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, up until I got into high school, it was really hard to watch Arkansas baseball. I used to listen to the radio like... You know, oh, I've, yeah, Chuck mm-hmm. Barrett, man. That was... Because, uh, of course, you had Paul Eels, Mike Nail, and Chuck Barrett kind of for the big three. That was that was iconic. Oh, yeah. It's iconic right there, but... Uh, and I also loved it when Rick Schaefer would get on the call sometimes, too, because nobody could make a single sound more exciting like it was a game, walk-off home run than Rick Schaefer. <laughs> that guy would lose it. All the time is it just if it was a single. So, but man. By yeah. the way, speaking of radio, I mean, it's it, you know we're talking about how you can watch all these games now. But Phil, any anytime you're forced to li- like, I'm forced to watch or listen on the radio. I'm like, oh man, but at least at least we got Phil. Phil and Bubba. Phil both. and Bubba are just a magic Phil and duo. Bubba are great. They got they got really good. That's good chemistry. Well, yeah. they're just two like opposite personalities that are just perfect together. Yeah, in Phil's those very like articulate and like very you know like detail oriented and doing all this. And Bubba's just there with a the badge, being like, "What's up?" Like showing up like five <laughs> minutes before the game starts. What are we talking about? Bet who y'all can, can hit one out there. Man. Yeah, like, who we playing? <laughs> he's like wearing his big, just, yeah, he's perfect for it. So, yeah, oh, I yeah. love that. Uh, a few comments coming in. Kingsley says, are any of y'all coming to DFW for the baseball games? Yes. Hell me yeah, and Andrew, we will be there. We'll be there. We'll be square. And we'll be fair. Good one. Yes. And there will be plenty of fair balls hit because we're going to be watching baseball, which is I cannot wait. And I'm also glad that it's not the first weekend of the season. Yeah, you get a little teaser. I like from getting James to play the, the school with a name as their as their team name yeah. is James Madison. I like that. Are those games on TV? Can we watch those on Watch ESPN? You can watch them on Watch it on SEC Network. So Plus. I about uh, Flow Sports, then we're, we'll be good. Oh, now the DFW games. Oh, I know we won't are. have to watch them. Yeah, on I'd say we won't. But, but uh, yeah. yeah, apparently uh, Kingsley won't either. Apparently not. 
Caden also says a Natty State front license plate would be B.A. Well, Brandon agree? Allen. Yeah, we, we could send him one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it would be Brandon Allen. Um, but yes, no, we, we're working on, on that, folks. Yeah, we're going to have some <laughs> yeah, cool apparel. Like, <laughs> well, we tried to give Brandon one, which I'll lit it on fire. Yeah, so, sure. yeah. <laughs> yeah you, you terrible human being. So uh, Wilson says, John, have you ever been in a love triangle before? What do you think this show is right now? I, was like, I, mean, I mean, it's it's exactly what we should is. just well, call we the segment earlier, the love triangle. I, I really almost floated the idea of a love triangle Instagram story. <laughs> <laughs> should have. And then uh, throwing the little triangles. I guess it's also tried out or whatever the girl. I don't know. Anyways, could have done that. But no, this is our own little love triangle on the John Neighbor show. So yeah. thank John, you for John's love life is a lot more like a line. He's going this way and the person's also going that way away from him. Like there's <laughs> just he's chasing them along. It's more like a line. I've never heard it described that way before, but <laughs> for, for, if we were going to give a shape for your love life, I don't think triangle is the one. No, no. Or uh, <laughs> like an octagon is probably not a good one either. No. Mm -mm. The, the, the fact that it closes trapezoid. is why it doesn't work. <laughs> you don't want a trapezoid. You <laughs> love trapezoid anything too. Start bringing up, <laughs> just bringing up shapes. Have it. Jeez. Oh, oh geez. Great. Zach says rights tomorrow. Yes, we're going to be at rights and Johnson. Can't not wait going, for it. Not going to wrongs. That's for sure. Not going to wrong. Going to rights. Yeah. Rights pull barbecue. Up. Yeah. Well, yeah. What, what you, I think, uh, well, only the, the cool people pull up. Well, yeah. Brisket and burn ends is all I really... I mean, uh, I love it all in the mac and cheese. I was going to say the mac and cheese that is honestly so like... good. Yeah. But yeah, I'm going to get a... Uh, I'm going to get the pulled pork nachos. Yeah, the nachos. I got nachos that last are, time we went. Great, oh, sail me out to sea. But you <laughs> could have actual uh, nachos, but then you add the uh, brisket on top of it. Or the bacon burn ends. All of mm, it. Yeah. yeah. I want I want to see a be like, I'm gonna ask him, can you guys do the works? Give me nachos, but every meat you have, yes, put on there. I'll pay for it. Like I, I don't care if it's fifty bucks or more. Yeah. Like I'll just be like, give me the works. They're gonna ask you to pay for it when you order food. They're really? Ask. I thought it was free. <laughs> Man. We should go tonight. If, yeah, yeah. Can y'all can y'all give me this? I'll I'll give y'all money for it. <laughs> yeah, I'll hit you, I'll hit you up with it. I'll make it make it worth your while. Let me cut you a deal. Yeah. But no, I, man, I'm looking forward to that. Going to Wright's Barbecue, hanging out, seeing all the... Seeing the, 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 the big boys. Yeah. Hopefully they don't eat them all out of house and home. Like, I'm sure they're probably prepared for that. The offensive linemen coming. I'm excited to talk them. to uh, Josh Braun. You could tell the first time we met with him in the media that he like he was a sharp guy. That he like oh, was yeah. not just he's here to his, play some football row, and mess around. Yeah, dude. He's a poetic dude. He really is. He's a like, he's very, deep he's thinker. Well yeah, he was, he was very well spoken. Was he yeah. the Lord of the Rings guy? Yes, when they were talking, yeah, yeah. But yeah, there's always like transfers that you can tell whoever it is, Kyle, Oliver, whoever, that they just grab it. They're like, I can always count on yep. this guy. Josh Braun was so good at talking to the media, they started throwing him after losses. That's when, That's you, when know you know you've That's earned you know the trust of the SID is whenever you're getting there after. And Dalton, Dalton Wagner. Wagner. Dalton Wagner, <laughs> Dalton Wagner. <laughs> yep. Because yep. Dalton Wagner, every time you'd ask him a question, he'd be like, oh, dude, Rocket, he's the best running back I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. Andrew Armstrong, never seen a better receiver than that guy. It's like, so they would, he was like their PR. It was like just, that's how we'd get our stories. Yeah, so probably Braun's going to be the guy again this year for them. But Josh Braun is not there. just like Don Wagner where he just says good stuff. Like, Josh Braun will really think about it, and he's like, yeah, he's very, here's why we're struggling. He yeah. reminds me a lot of uh, of Justin Smith as an interview. Yeah, that's he was a good very call. much that way. You ask him a question, sometimes I would even wonder if he heard me, but he's, like, pondering. Yeah, he's, you know, he'll just kind of be like, <laughs> and then he'll give the most thoughtful answer. You yeah. know, I love that. I yeah, because I, I, I interviewed Josh Braun uh, just last year during the season, and the – like for those of you who may not know, just give you a little idea of when it comes to like doing NIL interviews, at least the way that I did it on the buzz last year, is that it was it was it was pretty tough sometimes getting guys to get to a certain schedule because some guys would be like, oh, I got class, oh, I got this, I got that. I'm like, okay, well, your class schedule doesn't change every week; it kind of stays the same, so I don't buy that. But either way, uh, but Josh literally would show up, and he was like, all right, so we established it from the beginning. He's like, I can do seven thirties. 7.30 on Mondays, Monday nights. And I'm like, all right. And I'm, I kid you not, every Monday at 7.30, he was saying, sending me a text, like, we doing this? And I'm like, yes. And I sent him the link, and he was still sitting in the same chair, and he knocked it out of the park. He, he, he was big He's time. A pro. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, like, I like guys like that. That the, the, the thoughtfulness, I think, is what's really cool, too, because some players yeah. would just give you the, you know, oh, we're just taking one game at a time. And, yeah. yeah, you, you can tell know. you at least, like, I mean – it's not that no, I guess we're we're setting the bar pretty low that like he at least thinks about things before he says them and he like cares whenever we ask him questions. <laughs> True. The bar's low, but you could tell when the when the guy's like really there trying to give good answers and trying to be as informative. And so I, I Josh Braun, I'm excited to hang out with him. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The whole offensive line and 
Uh, I want to see uh, who's the who's the who's the people that eat the most. And it's over there too. Yeah. Like we'll so, have the scoops after this. So yes, we're, like, hey, guys. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna uh, and we'll be looking forward to catching up with him here on the yeah. show. So yeah. we'll give the uh, people what they want. Yeah, Kudis. Well, he was he was attacking them guys. Yeah. He's, My, it down. <laughs> he's taking he's locked in this offseason. <laughs> dude, I, I can't wait to have one of them or all of them just be like, we're gonna talk, try to interview him like right in the middle of like, you know, bring your food and just eat during the interview. It's like just be like, hey, you know. Yeah, there'll be one guy <laughs> that won't talk. He's just sitting over there, just sitting there, just eating ribs, just like yeah. He's just like, yeah, I'm busy. Can't do this. Do that, or you're like, hey, you're gonna have to pay for this. You have to get if you want me on the show. You have to do that. So, may have to do that at some point. But yeah, we'll be there. Kingsley's over here saying the sweet. Damn, I'm in the wrong business. Y'all need a content strategist or strategist, not strategist. 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 That's the word. No, I mean yes. I mean maybe. Send us a resume. We, we 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 need a lot of things, but. I don't know. I, w- I would be a reference for Kingsley. I would definitely Kingsley. Mm-hmm. If, if you apply for this job, I'll reference you. But if you apply for any job, let me know. I'll. I'll Hope tell the kiddo's him. doing well. Yeah. Oh goodness. Well, we did. We ever forget uh, determine if his kid is cursed or not? Because uh, you remember he was watching. He had an issue with one of the games where, like, when he put the kid to sleep, the Hawks came back and won. I can't remember. I, I think it which was. Side. Uh, I, for some reason, I feel like it was the Oklahoma game in Tulsa. So Kingsley, update yeah. us on whether or not yeah. your kid has been shunned or not. Yeah, well, <laughs> let us know. Let us know. Uh, <laughs> your kids, if, yeah, jeez. Anyways, exorcism, <laughs> baptism, we'll figure it out. I, I shouldn't have led with his kid being cursed before I elaborated. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. He probably gets not it. The, it's fine. Jeez. <laughs> Anyways, well, hey, well, folks, we're going to have a did you see this here in just a second because there's a lot of fun stuff that comes along with that. But before we do that, I got to tell you, of course, about superior contracting and development out of Valonia. Now, just because they're out of the Valonia, doesn't mean that they can't help you out, especially statewide, because there is a lot of you that you're going to need a licensed residential and commercial contractor specializing in all aspects of home rebuilding and remodeling. And they handle everything from fencing and drainage and additions and remodeling of all your existing structures and then all the way to land development and ground up construction. You can call them today for interior and exterior construction remodeling needs no matter what it is at 501-453-3053. That's 501-453-3053. You can also go to their website at superiorark, superiorark.com, or email them at contracting at superiorark.com to get an instant response from them as they're going to be helping you, especially out of the state of Arkansas, because we know that we like to do it a little local here on Natty State Sports. Well, they are as local as they get, but they want to help out all Arkansans and making sure that they're ready to go when it comes to all building and remodeling of their homes. So no matter if it's interior, exterior construction, call the folks at Superior Contracting and Development today at 501 501- 453-3053. We will take our final break. When we come back, we'll get to day. Did you see this on the John Neighbors Show here live from Natty State Sports Studios? So stay with us. We're not done yet either. So don't be satisfied because we're not done. We're not done yet either. So don't be satisfied because we're not done. We're not done yet. Take my dick in the mashed potato. Go Hawks. Powered by Arkansas for Arkansas. Every time you put a mic in my face, I'm going to say Arkansas. The John Neighbors Show is live from the Natty State Sports Studios.
Welcome back into the John Neighbors Show here live from Natty State Sports Studios as we're about to wrap things up. i got the guys over there, too, hanging out for some reason. I don't know why they're still here, um, but they wanted just to Dude, be. that's why. Yeah. It is a triangle after all. We, this is yeah. the love triangle, a, a Thursday love triangle. The reason so. why I'm here is because Texas Roadhouse lets you join their wait list online. So I don't have to rush out of here. Man. And just go to Roadhouse. Yeah, in honor of Conor McGregor, I'm going to the Texas Roadhouse. Wow. If you see me there, don't speak to me. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Actually, I'll be with my girl, so definitely come up and be like, dude, you're the best. Is that, is that a good date spot? I can't remember the last time I've been to it a Texas for, Roadhouse. It is for so me and my girl, know. man. We love Texas Roadhouse. Hey, nothing wrong with Texas eat. Roadhouse. I, I haven't been in a long time. She used to so. live in Rogers, so we would go there like all the time, but it's been a while. But uh, we got a gift card, so. You know. Those are the best types. <laughs> Give Anywhere you got a gift card, that's a date spot. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do have a gift card there, too, for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, I, yeah, after Christmas, the January and February are big used gift card months. Oh, I yeah. get a lot of gift cards yeah. for Christmas and so that and That's Cracker Barrel. go-to for people like, it's nothing bad. It's just almost like, I don't know what to get you. There you go. Now, yeah, but if you if they guess correctly, it's always it's always appreciated. That's true. I appreciate the guess as opposed to like just the like the Amazon gift card or just the, you know what I mean? Yeah, the like, Amazon gift like card is Amazon really Amazon gift card's clutch. Yeah. You say it's clutch? Yeah. It's that's cl- that's it's phoning clutch. it in. That's phoning it in. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you got no, me an I'll Amazon gift card happy. for Christmas, John, I'd be like this guy. Yeah. I would appreciate it well, more yeah, if, but you if get you're somewhere specific, you know. Well, yeah, but if you're like if you're someone who shops on Amazon a lot, that's fair. It would have, that's maybe a good if spot. it's like you know that person really shops on Amazon, like for, like yeah, yeah some sure. people. But yeah. you, you learn what you someone thinks an, about I you. I don't be getting on Amazon. So if y'all give me an Amazon gift card, you learn what someone thinks about you based on the gift card they get. Like what if somebody handed you a Red Lobster gift card. I'd use it. And I'd I would, be use, it too, but I would, I would use it. Like, I'd be like, I haven't been to Red Lobster in forever, yeah, it's so weird. it's like interesting. But yeah, if someone, but like my my mom used to give me a beat ups gift card every year. Oh heck Christmas. yeah, I've gotten a lot of those. I've gotten yeah. dozens. Chili's. Many you know? a date. Yep, many a yeah. many Chili's. a first date has been fumbled by me taking someone with my my right. beat ups gift card. I don't know why it didn't work. But like Michelle, <laughs> Michelle's brother, like he he got us a gift card for uh, for Feed and Folly. And so we like oh, we yeah. like that place, but like you, he lives in Connecticut, so he had to do some research and talk to people. You know, it's like the thought. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, especially for someone that's not not from here. If they yeah. get you a specific one like that, that is pretty cool. But yeah. Amazon is good. Yeah, you could tell when they got it from Target too, when they were they were shopping at Target and said <laughs> it's like that gift card stand over there that's got the yeah. rotating yeah. thing. Especially back oh, when damn, I used to be about fat John. man. Back when I was yeah. fat man, I'd be getting all kind. I'd be getting McDonald's Sonic <laughs> gift cards. Man, it's crazy. Yeah. Sonic. If, but if someone gives me a Sonic gift card, it's like. I respect They that. know you. Yeah, they know me. And then the best thing about it is when you do a gift card to a restaurant or a fast food restaurant that has an app where you already get discounts like Sonic anyways. Mm. That you can load them into yeah. that you don't have to, like, swipe. Yeah. They're making yeah. it too easy for us these days. Too easy <laughs> for us. Uh, a few things I wanted to bring up. I, this is just a question. Not that it's, like, big breaking news because who gives a crap. But the Packers apparently hired Boston College's head coach, Jeff Halfley, to be their new D.C., my question is, Is would you rather be a head coach of a Power 5 program in college football or would you rather be an assistant coach in the NFL? I would, I would rather be a head coach at a Power 5 program, but I feel like there's a, like it's trending the other direction because of all the things we talked about earlier with it just being such a pain in the, you know, to, be a, to be a college head coach at this point. Yeah. Um, and you can make good money. And you have an off season. Yep. Like I've heard, I've heard from basketball coaches who were head coaches in college, who have gotten assistant jobs or whatever in the NBA, and they're like, "I'm never going back because I actually have an off season." And when practice is over, practice is over, and I just go home. And yeah. so, you know, there's something to that. You don't have to worry about these kids, man. Yeah. Yeah. You, Curtis kind of talked me into it. I think I'd be an NFL assistant, but I don't know. I have a I have a large ego, so maybe I'd want to be. I think that's the that's the the case for staying in college. You want to be like, him. Yeah, it's like you yeah. get to really yeah. you get full autonomy. But I think for a lot of guys that don't want to do, like if I was a guy who just wants to hang out and collect a paycheck and do whatever, I'd yeah. See, I think good. I think I would uh, I think I would like to be a head coach of a college football program just because of like I don't know. I feel like as a head coach, I guess in the NFL you kind of get some retreads too. But like in the NFL and in, in college football, if you're a head coach of a Power Five program. And, well, and I guess he's retired now. I was about to say he could just go into Nick Saban's rehab program and be all right. But now you can't even do that anymore. So I don't know. Maybe I would rather be a defensive coordinator. But it's also Boston College. I'm like, yeah, ah. what? I, I need to talk to Bob about this hire is what I need to do. Yeah. yeah. He'll have an opinion. That's for sure. Yeah. 
Okay. No, I, I'm not. I'm not sure. Like, what? Uh, like Bob is a Bob is a Packers fan and has been a Packers fan, but he always like brings up being like anytime the like when the Jets and Packers played and everything, he would try to like do something. I don't know. He's be, part owner. Weird. So what's that? He's part owner. <laughs> yeah. Packers. Packers. You could own the Packers. Mm-hmm. Is he really? Yeah. They do a weird thing where like they literally. <laughs> <laughs> like yes, you can buy, tell me. you can pay like fifty bucks and get a certificate, <laughs> and you're like a part owner. So there's like a bunch of people in in Green Bay who own the Packers, own a percent of a percent. Is how, Bobby, do get, how do you get on? How do you get on top of that though? Like, how do you do that? Like, is it know. just something you pay for? Like, yeah, is it just no, like, I, hey, you, you literally I want to just this? sign up and pay for it. Yeah. Well. Well. I don't know. I just found that kind of interesting because it was just like I uh, think that like especially in the NFL with the way that. They really do their do their justice of try to like get the fans involved, but then they really don't care as much. So, oh, yeah. but yeah, in that case, they do. Um, let's see. Also, there was another story I want to bring up here. Um, that's not it. Uh, this one. So Chris Collins, he got the the head coach of Northwestern <laughs> gets this. ejected, but it was like <laughs> the game had ended. <laughs> so like, the fact that he got ejected and the game ended, like, I'm going to play this and see, uh, like, look at this stuff. Ooh. This is always funny. This is so good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> like, look at that. Like, yeah, like, I just, like, I'm, I'm laughing so hard at it <laughs> because the game's <laughs> over. He lost, <laughs> but he gets ejected. And so, like, it's just, so can you eject somebody when the game's over? I guess you can technically. Yeah, and I mean, what does it do? I don't, I don't know. But there was some coach. Uh, That's incredible, man. The UConn head coach. What's Hurley? his name? Hurley. Yes. There's a video of him where he's like celebrating like crazy, and he's like, yeah, yeah. and then he like realizes he has to coach, and then he like calms down. And he's like, and he goes yeah. and does it. I love those videos too when the guy's like trying to celebrate, but he has to he has to go shake the other coach. I hand. love how he's getting the fans. Like, you yeah, know, he's like, like Woo. <laughs> That's a classic ejected guy move to rile yeah. the fans up. That's a classic. That's yeah. really good. I, I don't blame by him for being ticked, by the way. Yeah, because what was it? The free throw the s- discrepancy was, like, just stupid. Well, it's it, crazy. And then Zach E can just do whatever he wants, and it's always a foul against him or, or on him, you mm-hmm. know? Like, they just, he just bullies guys down there. You can't guard him, and it's just always a foul. It's crazy. Well, the problem is, is that, obviously, Purdue was playing to win, and Northwestern was playing to develop. And yeah. So yeah, that, that is that's true. Just, that's what happens. There. Yeah. But how about Northwestern being six and three? Hey, they're good. I mean, they beat yeah. uh, they, used to they be beat good Purdue earlier yeah. in the year. Yeah, I, I love yeah. when Northwestern's good. I love how he still like made sure to stop. Like, look at this. Yeah, he make sure to go over. He's like, okay, I, hey, Matt, I'm I'm good. I'm good. Okay, wait, well, I'm gonna go talk to Matt. Yeah, and make sure that he's not Mo's. I'm not mad at him. I'm just yeah. mad at those guys. Gotta yeah. you gotta, gotta say guys bye to the Hey, Matt, come over here. Good job. Yeah, good Dapper job, B. Matt. Thanks, man. Appreciate the fans. See ya. Yeah, get yeah. You guys are great. You guys are great. Yeah, but those officials, those are crap. That Love assistant that. is not as good as Ronnie Brewer, by the way. At, at the get back, hold back. He's yeah. not a good get back guy. Yeah, he needs to be better at that. So, anyways, I thought it was pretty great though, as far as him, uh, you know, getting in, uh, getting involved. I love ejections, anyways, from coaches because they're pretty mm-hmm. iconic and pretty legendary. But that's pretty great. Um, how about this? Okay, speaking of college basketball, I want you guys' thoughts on this too. Nope, that's not it. Uh, how do you think about St. John's honoring an Elite Eight team? They got, like they're they're honoring the members of the ninety eight ninety nine elite eight team during halftime of the UConn game. Do you think like so, at what point in time should you be really honoring teams? Is well, that like, their best team? I was about to say St. John's has has like made Final Fours before, right? They, like, have. they have. Yeah, they've had better teams. Yeah, so I mean, if you, I don't know. Maybe if they've only made the elite eight like three times in school history, like okay, you're gonna honor the one. I don't know. I feel like there has. I thought St. John had more had more pride in the program. They had they had I more mean, history. Granted, they've made two Final Fours, one in 1952 and one in 1985. So it's been a minute. How many elite? Does it say how many elite dates they've been to? Yeah, they've made six, and their last one was in '99. So maybe, well, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, their last Sweet been 16 to one was since, also in '99. Yeah, Final so. Four, I could get behind that, but I don't. Is it the '99 know, team man. that they're honoring here? Is that what we yeah, determined? Yeah, '98, '99 team. It's like their last good team. Yeah, know. it's almost sad when you honor them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like. One also, had they not been honored before? Well, I guess like, the question <laughs> I'm going to ask is, like, been, do you think... It's been, like, 30 years, dude. Do you think, like, yeah, do you think in 20 years or so, like, Arkansas is going to honor the 2021 Elite Eight team? Like, do you think that'll be a team know. that gets honored? The only reason I think they might do something like that is because a lot of guys from that team might stick around. Not stick around, but 
would be willing to come back. Like Justin Smith, would, he's come back since. Moses Moody obviously would. Like I think maybe maybe for something like that. What, but and also, what do we mean by honoring? Like bring them out at halftime? Yeah, Arkansas, I guess, yeah, because they're doing probably. it at halftime. So like honoring them and do their version of the yeah. Arkansas call. does that like all the time. Yeah, but I don't. I also like to me. They if bring you're them doing out an announcement yeah. like this, though. To me, that means it's like you're having it's them a talk thing. to somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're having it was like build you're, that. You're night, announcing yeah. them like because I think of like yeah. I know it's maybe not as big of a deal, but it was like kind of like when Arkansas honored the '94 national championship game in that Georgia game in '08, and they like asked i think it was the ncaa or sec or whoever like can you give us like a 30 minute half time to do this so they did um <laughs> yeah, I don't so know if, they, if they did that then this. yeah it is weird yeah i, I just, just didn't know if it was like hey they just brought him out on the court during the yukon game yeah if that's the case then like yeah arkansas probably do well, that. well it makes me wonder you know you think uh like will alabama do their sweet 16 run you know depends on how the next 20 years go under nate oats yep yep and uh I mean that was their greatest year, or their, I guess you should say maybe their SEC regular season title year team. That's what it. That's be. where yeah they'll do. That's that. That's where the banners get hung, boys. There right, yeah. the regular season <laughs> yeah. SEC. Yeah, yeah. Forget all that. Also, uh, I'm a SpongeBob guy. Apparently, the Nickelodeon uh, Super Bowl play thing, whatever, is uh, they're gonna have uh, "Sweet Victory" by SpongeBob. That song that was so iconic. That was played at the at the Super like the halftime show. Yeah, you couldn't say the Super Bowl on SpongeBob, but yes. Apparently, it's yeah. uh, going to be on Nickelodeon's broadcast. And what, what game was it that they performed at the the the, the title championship match? They... <laughs> it's like a, something that they couldn't do anything about. My yeah. favorite thing, I'm my in. favorite one of those of all time is that High School Musicals, East High School, and you know they played the state title, West High School. <laughs> Heck yeah, yeah. I love like, it. That way, we're not getting in trouble with anybody there too. So yeah, <laughs> but I I don't know. I, I actually like the. Did you guys ever watch the Nickelodeon? Yeah, I, I enjoy oh, it. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Cool. If you don't have a, vet, a rooting interest in the game, absolutely. It would really piss me off if I was watching my team and they were getting scored on and all that. And then slime just exploded <laughs> everywhere when you're like, but oh. Yeah, all my buddies are Saints fans, but one of their games was on it, and I watched that, and I was like, this is awesome. Yeah, they should do more of that. Mitch Trubisky won the MVP. Yeah, what did, what did he get? Like a, like a He literally got like a Nickelodeon, like the big blimp. Like they have like a trophy. Where do you think he blimp. has that? Oh, yeah. Where do you think that is sitting right now? He's, he's talked about it before. Like he's like, yeah, I still got it. I mean... It's not like he has that many trophies. I'm about to say it's probably thing, a right? pretty empty uh, trophy case if that's the, if that's the case. He has like a second team All ACC plaque somewhere, and then he did make a Pro Bowl, sadly enough. Oh yeah, he did. He did, hey, dude. The NFL Pro Bowl is out of all the pro sports leagues and their All Star format. Pro Bowl is by far the worst. It's so I hate bad. Andy pro Dalton bowl. is like a five time Pro Bowler, yeah. and they keep trying to change it. And it's, it just, they literally it play matter tag. What they, do. they literally play like tag and two hand yeah. touch football. And dodgeball and stuff at the Pro Bowl because nobody wants to play in the Pro yeah, Bowl, yeah, right? Well, it's and they do it in the middle of the playoffs too, which is bizarre. Yeah, it's really. Well, and they used to used to do it like remember it was in Hawaii, and that was kind of the thing that they would try mm -hmm. to to make it make it work. But yeah, yeah, I don't it's know. Not in Hawaii anymore. I don't think so. <laughs> I did. There oh, was more. What the hell's the point? Yeah. They didn't even have the Maui Invitational in Maui one year, Curtis. Fair, Nothing fair. is sacred. Well, yeah, didn't they do it in like Asheville or something? <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. The Damn, Asheville dude. Imagine. Yeah, I mean, I get it with the pandemic and everything, but imagine like being recruited, and be like, "Hey, we're going to Maui." Just or kidding. Making the Pro Bowl we're going the one to the year. mountains of North Carolina. Like, yeah, it's like, no, we're going to Albuquerque this year. Yeah. We're not going. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> right. what? It's like oh, I made the Pro Bowl. I can't even have a fun trip. <laughs> Dude, Addison uh, wants to talk about this, and I want to talk about it too. You remember old Brad Bohannon? Oh yeah. Well, I almost brought him up earlier when we were talking about fans getting ejected. You remember Brad Bohannon got oh, yeah, ejected? He like doing, a, he was calling the hogs. It was like two weeks before that. He has like a funny ejection where he like tried to rile up the fan base after getting ejected. Now we know why he was so pissed. Dude, did y'all read this clip of the Brad Bohannon thing? Well, I haven't read it all. I just read the, the excerpt about this. But yeah, yeah. that the bottom excerpt, when you get to it, is absolutely jaw dropping. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's pretty wild. So basically it's talking about when, of course, he was betting or, you know, yeah. throwing some bets in. Probably got fired. Either way, I love how they say Louisiana State University. Like, come on. Well, I love that they have practice practice LSU. LSU. one. In yeah, the but it's prior to Alabama's baseball game against LSU. Uh, Bohannon sent several electronic messages via the signal encrypted messaging application to a better that Bohannon knew was involved in sports wagering activities. The electronic messages indicated that an Alabama baseball student athlete, student athlete one, mm -hmm. the scheduled <laughs> starting pitcher for that evening's contest against LSU would not start the contest due to an injury. Bohannon provided this information to the better. Before reporting the starting lineup with student athlete one replaced as the starting pitcher to the LSU staff. Specifically, Bohannon texted the better, quote, hammer, all in caps. 
Hammer, <laughs> student athlete one. He's out for sure. Let me know when I can tell LSU. Hurry. Dude, that is That's wild that he's got like crazy. Jay Johnson waiting at home plate. He's, he's like, like, dude, dude, God, dude, get the freaking bet in, dude. Yeah, dude. I got it. Like, what are you doing here, man? Like, we got we got to put the money on it. That's the that's hurry so too, hilarious. and like the fact he's on caps hammer. Which, yeah, which we do we know By what picture was? Like, I can't remember did. the dude's name, but I remember yeah. it happening in the moment. And checking back later when I saw that all that happened, I was like, wait a minute, they're Friday night start. I forgot his name. He pitched really well against. Well, Arkansas. Addison saying yeah. in our comments, he says another wild thing is that the pitcher he scratched is now at LSU. <laughs> that's not true. It <laughs> oh. was it was it was Luke, Luke Coleman pitched for them. Okay. It wasn't him. I was about though, to say. I was like, wait a minute. It was there. They had a different. I forget his name. He pitched at Arkansas and pitched really well. How it's gonna kill me that dude's name, but no, it was a. Uh, but I yeah, Luke Holman, interesting kid. But uh, scroll down to the. Did they have the part about what his buddy responded to, or what his buddy did who got him in trouble? How um, they got caught? Let's see. It's got the <laughs> negotiated resolution. Oh yeah, it says, says shortly after <laughs> receiving the electronic messages from Bohannon, the better attempted to place a hundred thousand dollar wager on the LSU baseball team <laughs> at the Bet G Bet MGM Sportsbook at the Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati. But the sportsbook staff limited the better to a fifteen thousand dollar wager. The better then attempted to place additional waivers or wagers involving the April twenty eighth Alabama versus LSU baseball game, but the sportsbook staff declined the wagers due to suspicious activity. Yeah. This suspicious activity included the better's insistent demeanor to get the bet placed in statements to sportsbook staff that the bet was, quote, for sure going to win, and quote, if you guys only knew what I knew. <laughs> Hmm. Atta boy. Wait, wait, really subtle right there. <laughs> really subtle. I he mean, says the suspicious activity also included the better showing sportsbook staff messages from Bohannon and explaining that the messages were Bohannon, informing the better that Alabama was scratching its starting pitcher before the game and before Bohannon started at LSU. I'll Incredible. tell you, don't ever bet, you know, don't ever do what you're doing here, insider betting. But if you're trying to place a bet and the guys are not convinced that you are a legit better, do not show them no. proof that you are not a legit better. <laughs> if you're trying to convince Dude. them, you got to let me place this bet. I'm doing it because I know for a fact it's going to win due to a very illegal activity. <laughs> like this, this <laughs> that is a wild. It's showing them the text. This, That's this, crazy. This, this reminds me of something to where if it's like, like if I, my brother who does not sports bet, I'd be like, okay, you go do this. This would be like somebody like, uh, I need a bet. Well, you can't. What? Well, no, no, no. I like. I'm telling you, it's gonna win. I, I, I don't know if you know. Like Brad Bohan, he's the coach. I'm, I'm friends with him, and I know it's gonna work. See, look, here's text messages from him. Oh, sir, yeah, you know, like you're just completely busted, and now you're right. Gone. Like that is like, crazy. Do you what do you, do you think Brad Bohan has talked to that guy? Like, what do you think he said to him? Because he literally cost him, like, not only money. I mean, dude, but also did you read job. like how much he's banned? His ban is crazy. He ain't coaching oh, in college baseball. No, no, again, no. Dude. I mean, he shouldn't. No, he shouldn't for he sure, shouldn't. but it's crazy that uh, over just his friend being an absolute idiot, like one of the dumbest Dread people alive. Name dropping him right there. It's like, I got text messages, my yeah. man. I've Golly. got proof that I'm breaking the law. Okay, man. so yeah, here's, uh, it kind of reminds me of uh, that funny uh, NBA on TNT clip of, you know, uh, you know Chuck, you know, Charles Barker says, uh, do not do not commit crimes with checks. It's like kind of the same thing. It's like, folks, if you're ever going to do this, as Andrew was pointing out, when you walk in and you're trying to put a hundred thousand dollar wager on it, and they limit you to fifteen thousand, you know what you do? Okay, fifteen thousand. Yeah, you just you take walk it. away, or yeah. you go to a different sports book. You because, know what I mean? You yeah. just take, you place your fifteen k, <laughs> and then you fifteen thousand. I'm sure would have been a nice, nice chunk of change. Yeah, you, when you're getting away with something illegal like that, you just take what you can get. That's awesome. Buddy's trying to set himself up for life. Like I, I'm, yeah, I've been awesome. in that situation where I want to place a live bet and I'm trying to get it in in time, and it's like, hey, all I can place is thirty seven dollars and twelve cents. That's what I got. You know, it's like, just, just do I it. Just, I just love it so <laughs> much. Definitely don't pull the out way. the messages, brother. That is crazy. <laughs> pull out the receipts. Yeah, it's the time you <laughs> don't, don't incriminate want the you and the coach. <laughs> you're going out with the subtlety of a baboon when and you're like going Bo I mean, not poor Brad, Brad Bohannon. I mean, that's sketchy stuff. There, it's tough that he's just never going to coach in college again. And if his buddy would have just shut up, it's yeah, all taken. That that is so. It's like a fifteen-year show cause. Yeah, like he can get hired, but you can't coach an NCAA baseball game for the five years after yeah. getting hired. So like, that's like he Bruce should just uh, stuff. he should just <laughs> coach JUCO ball or something. Something, yeah, yeah like be the yeah. sketchiest Man. JUCO coach of all time. That'd be or awesome. just be like a, uh, I don't know, like do what uh, what was it the movie Hoosiers? You know, because. Uh, Gene Hackman's character, he got banned or whatever because he fought a player. 
Like go down to the high school ranks in some small town in baseball and yeah. teach yeah, the kids you about Coach how to play. Carter. And, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just do those redemption things. story. Yeah, yeah, just do those things. That'll work out. Lead for a team you. to the Little League World Series. <laughs> the Brad Bohannon yeah. uh, documentary in a hundred years is going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. Can't wait for it to come out. Well, folks, that does it for us. Appreciate everybody listening in and watching into the John Neighbor Show. Be sure to like and subscribe to the show on iTunes on Google Play. Is it iTunes? It's not even iTunes anymore. It's Apple. Good grief. What am I? Eighty. Yeah, it's not a thing. My goodness. All right. It's it's on it's on Apple. It's on Google. It's on YouTube. It's on Facebook. It's on X. It's on all that stuff. But we appreciate everybody listening and watching in. Come out to Rights tomorrow. We'll be out there streaming live and we're gonna get it done. So for Andrew Ellis and Curtis Wilkerson, I'm John Neighbor, same sports show, same sports channel tomorrow afternoon at Rights Barbecue and Johnson. And stay with us, folks, because we're gonna have a lot of great content coming up on Natty State Sports.